Okay. All right. Next, approve the minutes. The minutes of March 7th, 2022. So moved. I have a motion. Do I have a second? I second. Second by Jess. Is there any further discussion on these minutes? I just, I wanted to add that Christy Snip had made a comment that um, under, let's say, appointed officers, it would be before number five on page five. Um, it would go in there. She said that four people had applied for the, um, I think, development review, and she was the only one who showed up. Just kind of follow up on that. Oh, that wasn't, it's not in there. No. And then I exited the meeting just as you were starting to discuss the Declaration of Inclusivity. Okay. That's when I. Okay. Thank so you. So just you can have that noted too. That. Yeah. You get that, Sarah? No, because I didn't write the We'll go slow. So, we'll go slow. Can you go slower for me? Sure. So where you exited, we're going to move that after two and before three? Correct. Okay. And where's the Christy part? Oh, it, it, she's not in there. It's, it would be at the top of page five, just before number five. Yeah. So add this about Christy? Yes. Yeah. Please. Okay. Any further discussion on these? Yeah, I'm in number five. Okay. Set the regular meeting schedule. It says motion carried five zero. It was really four to one. Okay. Good catch. Four to one. Four to who who put it against it? You did. I did. No. <laughs> or is that oh. Or oh, oh under. Be? No, I I I voted against the appointment. Of the appointment, not the schedule. So that should be a yes. Then. So that should be a yes, and it should be five. Oh, that's right. That's right. Four to yeah. one. That's right. So it's it's correct then. No, well, the five to zero is correct, but the I voted yes, and then I voted no to the appointment. Yeah, that's what that's it says correct. right that's here. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah, that's correct. Oh, I see. You see that, Don? Yeah, I see it. Now. Okay. All right. Any further discussions? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The minutes are approved unanimously. Next, community concerns. Do we have any community concerns tonight? Yes, sir. Can you introduce yourself, please? Uh, Anthony Cody, Cody Hill, Morrisville. Welcome. Concern, mud season. I realize it's mud season. This has been going on for three years. And the railroad sucks. Mm -hmm. Ever since Roland got done, the railroad sucks. Okay, something's going on. They're not paying attention. As a matter of fact, even the pavement on one on on the first five feet on the right side, all the way up through, was all washed out. So why wait to fix it? And I, I realize it can't be fixed now, but I asked two years ago to get it fixed. Does anybody come up there? Does anybody ever come up there to look? I'm going to say no. I got three classic cars. I can't even get them down the road. Can't get them up. Now, if you got a classic car, you don't want to go somebody head on to to say, well, "Why don't you get over it?" Because the road sucks. Okay, that's what that's what's happening. And we pay enough taxes up there to get something. Okay. Right now, the greater, they, they tell us the greater is, uh, two graders are broke. Is that true? One of them is right now. One okay. of them is a dealer. Yeah. Good. So, so what do we do? It's our, it's, it's our problem or what? Well, when, when the taxes are due, what happens? Right. You, everybody wants their tax money. That's true. Okay. I don't have my classic cars out now, but it, it's not good up there. Yeah, we've got a lot of issues on a lot of roads around the Yeah, county. yeah, I knew we you do. were going to say that. That's all we do. Yeah. We do. Uh, yeah. yeah. So what's wrong with the graders? Well, one of them is an emission problem, or did that get fixed, Eric? That was fixed by the technician on site. Okay, and what's the other other one? The John Deere is the one with the main seal break between the uh, transmission and the engine. Uh, we have the mud tracks and the bells. Yeah. Yeah. It's unacceptable. 
I, I, it is. It's hard. It's hard everywhere. Yeah. You know, other towns are having the same problems. I've talked yeah. to a lot of other towns, same thing. A lot of roads are bad. They're, a lot of roads are worse than they've ever been. And I wouldn't blame the highway guys for that. They've been no. working their tails off. You know, they have been. They've been working all night some nights. You know, but there's only so many. We've got, how many roads are there, Kevin? How many roads, how many miles of uh, dirt roads are there? We're between 74 and 78 miles of dirt roads. I remember you, yeah, two yeah. years ago, right? Two years ago, yes, sir. Yeah. So, 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 how do we get it fixed? It's on our list. With, uh, with yeah, it's on our list. You told me that two years ago. And it's the best I can tell you now as well, sir. All I can tell you is when Roland was up there. Well, can we have the, the comments made to the board? Yeah, the comments need to be made to the board, not, not to one of the staff members. When Roland was up there, the road, and I've been there 35 years, the road was maintained, and that's all I'll say. Okay. It was maintained at least a couple times a week. Okay. It's not getting maintained now at all. Well, we'll try to do our best. Okay. Can you explain to me as a layperson who doesn't know about roads, what it, the, the, besides the mud season, what the issue is? Right in front of my house, in front of the mailboxes, there's potholes all year round like that. Okay, and that's because, well, Tom Cody is my cousin. And Tom tells me if the grader got in there and dug them out, if they actually dig them out, those those potholes would not come back. So when they grade the road, all they do is just skim it over. I don't know anything about grading roads. I don't know. Okay, but I'm getting it from Tom. Tom, right? And everybody knows Tom. He said if they dug it out, it wouldn't be that way. To, to a certain extent, that's true, but in the in certain areas, no matter how much you dig them out, they're going to reappear because okay. that's where the cars, the tires move. Never was like that when Roland was doing it. Well, I wouldn't say never because there's been issues forever. You know, Roland did a good job, but I know that our highway, highway guys now are doing a great job. I, I, you know, I have no idea who's running the grader, but they don't know what they're doing. Right. Well, that's, that's one opinion. We stand behind our staff. I mean, they're doing the best they can. Well, if that's the best they can, it's not good. But we, we'll take what you said under advisement, and we'll try to look, take a look at it and try to, you know, see what we can do when we can do it. You're right. We can't do anything right now. But No, I gave it a good couple of years, right? I worked, I worked with you a couple of years ago, right? Yeah, and, and I haven't said nothing. And I had not, you, you and I said we were going to fix this. Correct. Right? Well, bring the issue to us. Okay. And we'll, we'll see what we can do about it. Yeah, thank and you. I'm not, I'm not mad. I'm, I just want to know how it's going to get fixed. Right. Well, it's definitely documented here tonight. Okay. So we'll, we'll do what we can. And am I asking for special treatment? No, no, nobody needs special treatment. No. Okay. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't I'm not looking for that. Okay. If that's, if the graders are broke, the graders are broke. We'll get by it. But thank you. I think, uh, a little bit more attention needs to be done. Thank you. Thanks for coming in tonight. And, and, and we do have, there is another problem up there if, if the cops are around. That muddy moose there at the, at the end of the road there, there's a lot of out-of-state traffic that comes up through there. Right. Well, those are all rental properties up there. That's right. 50 miles an hour. Okay. Well, uh, Gar's here tonight too, so he's, I'm sure he's hearing that <laughs> as well. That's not that's not my problem. I mean, but you, well, it's not close to that's one problem. But, but the, you know, the, there again, you know, the problem is is potholes. Sure. When you're driving through there. I don't disagree. Yeah. Okay. So. We just, have to put a bit. Okay. All right. But thank you. Okay. Thank you for yeah. bringing your concern. Um, I also, when I hear you talking about the dirt roads, I think that. Um, you know, maybe we're seeing, there's a lot of issues like um, Bob was saying that um, it's hard all over. Um, we've had a lot of um, staffing issues, like every town has, you know, a lot of um, access to materials, even to paved roads or um, to get access to gravel. COVID's been a big problem, like with staffing and it's just, you know, like it's been hard all over, but, but what I'm thinking of is a solution or like a bigger picture thing, which may or may not make you feel like we're going to address the issue. But um, I think our unpredictable mud seasons, like we're getting a mud season, and then we're getting a freeze, and then we're get, getting snow again, and that doesn't help the potholes. So maybe there's um, a bigger picture question we can look at about 
you know, how to maintain our dirt roads better, you know, what, what possibly can we do in the future to make it less of an issue? Because I see that next, you know, on my road too, it seems to be getting, it's, it's really bad because we don't just have one mud season now. It seems like we have a few. So, um, so I hear your concern and, and um, that'll be something we can look at in, in the big picture scheme of things. Like I said, I've been nice for three years. Right, yeah. I dropped, <laughs> I, I dropped, I hear something, you. I dropped yep. something in that box three years ago. I hear you. I never got yep. nothing. Yeah, I hear you. I called Eric, and I'm not picking on Eric. I called him a couple times, and left a message, and never got nothing. That's why I'm here tonight. Yep. And That's I the best thing you can do. Busy. Yep. Don't, yep. Everybody's busy. I'm retired, and I'm busy. You know what? Mm -hmm. Thank you, God. I'm busy. Mm -hmm. Okay? But you know what? Let's just get to the bottom of it. All right. Let's see what we can do. Yeah. Okay? Thanks for... You did the right thing coming here tonight. All right. I just want to see that if, if, if you can't fix it, then maybe send me a letter or something. Okay. We'll do what we can. Okay? Mm -hmm. I'm pretty easy to get along with. But when you pay that $6,000 a year, you want something. I hear you. I'd rather pay four thousand dollars a year for the roads than I would the school. How's that sound to you? No, that's all of us. All right. <clears throat> no, it's no, not all. No, no. <laughs> 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 well, there's a lot of money to waste in school, but we won't go that well, way. Well, let's not go there. We don't all yeah. agree on that. That's not the voice of right. the board. <laughs> all right. So, is there any other community concerns? My point of reference is how much the school costs on our property taxes, which is 85% mm -hmm. compared to the municipal side, it's only 15. I hear you, like right. And, and we can't do anything about it. Right. That's right. the problem. Right. Okay, next, do we have liquor control tonight, Sarah? Yes. Okay. Make a motion we go under liquor control. Uh, make a motion to go in. Second. Yes, Second. Second by Don. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? We are now in the Board of Liquor Control. There are three renewals, Walgreens, um, the 10th hole, which is um, golf, right of golf club, yeah. and Rock Art. Okay. Do I hear a motion to approve these? Make a motion to approve them. Second. Second. Is there any issues with them, Garth? No, they're good. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion is passed. Make a motion we come out. Make a motion to come out of liquor control for a second. second. Second by Judy. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? <clears throat> we are now out of liquor control. All right, next, new business. I want to do the appointments first. Let's um, do this first four. Eric, what's the point the police? That is for uh, Brian Tomlinson. He's been an officer with us for over a year now. Mm -hmm. He has completed his skill training and is now off on his own. He's uh, a full-time officer of the department. Okay. Okay. Do I hear a motion regarding that? I'll make the motion to approve. I'll second it. I have a motion by Don and a second by Brian. Is there any further discussion on this? He said he's been here for a year now. He has a lot. It's over a year at this point. The guard should probably speak to that. He, yeah, he was hired in February of last year. A little over a year. So his FDO is over, Garth? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is passed unanimously. Next, um, point animal control. We would uh, I'm looking to appoint Brian as the assistant animal control officer. He's going to be responding with John uh, for the time being anyway until John gets comfortable with our processes and whatnot. Okay. So uh, it would be good to have Brian recognize as the animal control officer. Brian Kellogg. Yes. Are you up for it? Sure. Okay. Do I hear a motion? I make the motion. Motion by Don. <laughs> Second. Second by Judy. Is there any further discussion? Is there a timeline when Brian can be relieved of his, um, of, of the apprenticeship or the mentorship, rather? We'll probably just play it by ear. So yeah. John's comfortable. Okay. 
worst change you've had in four decades. <laughs> yeah. I just know Brian's trying to get move on. <laughs> well, no, I, I'm here to help him, but he's going to fill in when I can't be around. Right. That's the big thing. Right. Transition into it. In fact, the right. uh, phone is ringing off the wall today. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? I'll abstain. All right. Motion is passed. 4 0. Next, pound keeper. Uh, the oversight, Jeff Fox, who owns the pound. Mm -hmm. He's also a pound keeper. He really needs to be appointed as such. Okay. I make a motion we appoint him. I have a motion by Brian. Do I have a second? Second. <clears throat> second by Judy. <clears throat> Any further discussion on it? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed unanimously. Next, set the comp compensation rate. For the so my discussions with John uh, early on have been showed great interest in the position itself. I uh, took a look around the county and looked down at Cambridge and see they had just hired, uh, I think they hired two animal control officers, but they set a rate of compensation such that uh, it was based on response, uh, two hour minimum response for any call. Uh, the rate of pay I'm suggesting is $25 an hour. So for him to respond to a call would be $50. If the call takes him more than two hours, it would be compensated based on how much time it took up the $25 per hour rate. But the, uh, it's, you know, for him to come away from his family to handle a family, family complaint, it's a great compensation I would say. Yeah, that's what we talked about before, isn't it? It is. <clears throat> Sounds good. Do I hear a motion regarding that? I make a motion we compensate uh, the animal control officer for $25 per hour. Minimum of two hours. For Minimum of two hours per call. There's a motion there. Oh, oh you go. Darn. Okay. It's okay. The word response is in there, which I think is critical. It's not a uh, reflection on John. I think he's an honorable guy, but John may not always be animal control. I would want somebody to take a phone call and charge us $50. That's why it's a response. All right. So let me re I'm going to revisit that. Yeah. I move to compensate John St. Amour $50 per response for animal control and $25 an hour for any response that exceeds two hours. Okay. I have a motion by Judy. Do I have a second? Yes, please. I second. Second by Jess. Is there any further discussion on it? I have a question for Brian. So how many, how many calls would you expect a week? Like how often oh, would you call? No week? idea. Um, is once a week reasonable? Or is it more often? Uh, well, this time of year, it's going to be a lot more. But I mean, I just got, I took a dog to the pound this weekend, and this morning, I think I got two calls. Yeah, two calls this morning. So is it? one was uh, dogs that ended up at tractor supply, and then I got a call about um, plant, cane plants, dogs. I haven't gone there yet. I'll send the other guy. Tour by my house. <laughs> Just kind of wondering how much money this might add up to. Right. Once a week? Well, over a year, so I'm not sure what the average might be. It's tough to say because we can go a couple of months without a dog. Yeah. yeah. But then all of a sudden you get four of them. So See, right. he, he may get a lot of calls too, and uh, he gets calls, he's not going to get it. Some of them will be phone call handled by phone calls. Yeah. Uh, it's a response type of thing. And he and I work too. If he takes four or five phone calls at home, there's no response required. Then I'll talk to him about how we compensate for that. But, yeah. And then is there, sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say that's the reason why I just want to get some idea of what we're talking about. Yeah. Is, there a, um, is there any mechanism for people whose dogs are either like repeatedly getting picked up or? Um, is anyone paying a pen penalty for a dog response? Like I know, for so, instance, not from experience, of course, my own personal experience in Stowe, if your, your dog gets picked up, you have to pay to get them out. Is there any mechanism for that where we'd be recouping any of the costs? There, there's current fee structures in place. Yeah. Yes, that. there is. Our ordinance gives a lot that never has been done. In, uh, like if your dog gets picked up today, yeah. it's so much to go up there. It probably costs you upward of $75 to get your dog out. And does that go back to the town? He, so yes. Someone goes to the pound. So someone goes to the town. Okay. Fees for the pound, fee for the animal control officer used to be. Um, if the dog goes to the pound, uh, late fee for Jeff going up, things like that. 
So it could be that. Um, yeah. There's not, there is tickets, but the tickets don't go to the town. No. Go to the state. Mm -hmm. Used to be the town got most of them and then a percentage went to the state and then all of a sudden they stopped that. Because I got a ticket book, I thought I just looked this morning because it's one that's never had a ticket written out of that book and I think it's 2015 because it didn't do any good to write tickets because it, you didn't get anything back. And, and another thing was I was where I couldn't be because you have to go to court to write a ticket if they fight it. Does the state have a minimum amount per ticket? I don't think so. Because the ordinance gives a $50, I mean it's a $100 fine per day for anything in the ordinance as far as I $50 waiver. So if you're guilty, you get a ticket, you can write a $50 check, I guess, to the state. It seems like what Jess is saying is, is good if you have repeated offenders, you know, the the town should get some of that money, you know, if, it, yeah. if yeah, you're called out repeatedly. Yeah. Ticket process, Garth, can you speak to that better than I can as well? Garth, do you know same, about that? The same civil ticket process that this yeah. is most of the money goes to the state. I, I think the percent is something along the lines of like 7% to get back out of their ticket. 7? Yeah. 7%. On the yeah. Level. If they do contest it, there's an administrative fee for court as well. So that's another, I think, 30 bucks that they add on at court. But that's nothing we see. So the town really doesn't make out well for tickets. Yeah. And we can put a lot of money into it with the dog officer. Yeah. yeah. Responding. I, re I remember giving a ticket one time to a guy on. I think it was Summer Street, and he ended up getting four or five tickets, and it went to the state. He never paid them, and they didn't do anything about it because what are you going? What are you going to do? Give him another ticket for that for not paying it? Yeah. So he That's never a, paid. It's a civil, anyway, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So. So there's, but there's no like fee just for getting your dog back, where some yes. of that would go to the town. That's my other question. The other piece of that. Mm -hmm. uh, and probably. Like, can, is that something we could work out with the pound, or is that like, would, is that with the exactly state? With the pound, but you probably could make the ordinance. I don't know whether there is or mm -hmm. is it. We could research it. We're going to take a look at the ordinance. I yeah. Have, yeah. Uh, I know some local citizens that are concerned about certain portions of it, and uh, that we haven't looked at it compared to other towns for a while. So yeah. It's, uh, it's on my list, but it's not a crime. Mm -hmm. so okay. Yeah. One thing I'd like to see happen. When you look it up, I think it's called Scott Law. Okay. And that it's similar to a parking ticket. So we can get the, the money back that way. You can try to work something else out. Okay. Before we start giving too many tickets, to, I'd like to make sure that everybody um, has their dogs registered. Mm -hmm. Right. Because yeah. this happened once we had a, when I first got on this four hours, I'm on this board. And uh, they were going they ordered me to give this guy a ticket. And, I said, well, if we're going to go to court, shouldn't our lawyer have his dog registered? <laughs> <laughs> right. So he did. So. And that's April 1st. <laughs> yes, Bob. Coming up. I know mine are not done yet, but it's not and April 1st yet. <laughs> yours were last year, though, I'm checking. Yeah, they were. <laughs> exactly. Everyone's got to look at them. Okay. But the dog's... They don't have to be licensed unless they're one year old, right? Or six months. Six months. Six months. Yeah. See, my Randy dog was, shot. wasn't six months. Oh, sure. <laughs> I had the other one. The other two were. Basically, once they're old enough to get their first rabies shot, because you can't yeah. get them licensed. Right, without it. Yeah. Got it. And that's another reason for registering, because that way you know where where they are. If I had that little dog I picked up the other night, had a chip in it. So I don't know if that's how they found the guy. But the dog got cleaned next day. So yeah, minor good. I'll chip too. Yeah. Uh, that's good. We can follow up on that. I, I'd like to know more. It seems like if we're going to be. How many tickets do you write? I mean, well, not many. Years ago, I wrote a few, very few. More or less, it was kind of a deterrent. Right. I can give you a ticket and I give you another one tomorrow and I give you another one. I mean, there was a guy on the uh, stagecoach road. I give five tickets, $500. And he right. finally fixed his kennel so the dogs didn't bark enough so people could. Oh, yeah, so, I know. Yeah, I kept, I going over, kept going over, right. kept going over, kept going over. I mean, he had 14 dogs out there in the woods, Newfoundland. He, right. He, he, 
uh, sold Newfoundlands. He had 14 of them there. Yeah. And loud dogs were going if crazy. If you bring dogs to the pound, that, that you've done more often than recently, the past years. Yeah. I, didn't, I don't usually bring them if I can help it. You know, I take them to the owner. In fact, I drove around an hour the other night trying to get, asking people. It was the cutest little dog. Mm -hmm. Well, it sounds like you're pretty lenient, yes. which is nice. Yes. But we need And it's that. good to be lenient. It is. I mean, uh, it's not the dog's fault that they're out there. Right. You know, if you could put the owner in the pound, well, then we'd be a little more <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. stronger, you know? Yeah. All right. All right. Well, more to come with that. No, we have to set compensation. Yeah. Is there any more discussion on the compensation? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is passed unanimously. All right, next presentation on community center by Stuart May of Lamoille Health Partner. Welcome. Welcome. Good evening. Thank you for the invite. Apologize my back to uh, the rest of everybody. I'm Stuart May, CEO for Lamoille Health Partners. We are the federally qualified health center here in the county providing uh, comprehensive services. So family medicine, pediatrics, family dentistry, uh, behavioral and mental services, uh, along with the pharmacy service line and our community health team, those that go out into uh, our community and help um, everybody be uh, healthier. Um, we are a not-for-profit um, and uh, recently, about a year ago, went through a rebranding. So for many of you that have been in town much longer, we were formerly known as Community Health Services in Lamoille Valley. Uh, Cheslo. Cheslo. Yeah. Yes, sir. Um, so anyhow, uh, the big piece is wanted to talk to the board and the community tonight about the community center uh, known as E equals MC Square. Uh, as many of you know, during COVID, that center had to close down our adolescent population, very much at risk, as many other uh, cohorts within our community are at risk. Uh, about uh, 90 days ago, uh, we as a team were talking about how do we start to support our adolescents. Um, found out that the community center was still closed. Both Lamoille County Mental Health and our behavioral mental health team were providing services down there. So we went and uh, talked to the owners and effectuated a um, asset purchase agreement. There's no money changing hands, but we're gonna assume the assets and the liabilities of the center to open it. Uh, we signed that agreement last week. It's currently with the Attorney General for approval. The only reason for that approval is E equals MC squared is also a not-for-profit. So anytime you move assets of a not-for-profit, the Attorney General just wants to sign off and make sure that those assets, which really are community assets, are being um, handled and or disposed of in the right way. We are looking to open the center during the academic year between 3 p.m. and 6.30 p.m. to provide a safe environment for our adolescent population. And what I mean by safe is a place for them to come to have both physical activities and, if you will, what we'll call educational activities. Um, we've been working with the middle school and uh, Matt Young, the principal up there, and collected some of the students together for a little focus group, if you will, uh, to find out some of their interests. So from there, we're going to develop some clubs, also some study hall uh, time, and look to some of our high school students uh, through that selection process to help with a little quote unquote tutoring. Uh, we're going to offer uh, healthy uh, snack alternatives while they are down there. There is no fee. Um, and we're also um, going to be educating them on making healthy decisions. A lot of this work uh, is going to happen in conjunction with other partners. I went to talk to some of my colleagues. So the folks over at Lamoya County Mental Health, I mentioned Matt Young, uh, but up at the middle school and the high school, uh, along with over at Lamoya Family Center through Healthy Lamoya Valley, we're going to work with that team to provide some educational um, inroads and continue with some of the work that they're doing in the school and reinforcing with the kids making healthier decisions. Uh, we are also working with the Literally School. Um, they uh, are very interested in providing support down there as well as an avenue for some of their students 
to uh, come and interact uh, with the community. Um, so we're um, very excited. We uh, hopefully are on track and we're going to do our best to open at spring break, which I believe is the week of April 18th. Um, so while school won't be in, we think this would be a good time for us to get a little kinks uh, out of the operation along with providing those students um, uh, some place to come. We're not sure what those hours will be, um, but uh, look to do something around that. Um, I would uh, also be remiss if I didn't mention Eric and his team, and I see uh, Trisha is also on the call. They've been great assets in working with the town. Um, and how we can also incorporate some of those activities down at the community center with some of the uh, goals that we're setting as a town for having our community interact and support each other. While we know uh, in the past there were other groups that were using some time down there, right now we just want to concentrate on our adolescent population um, and then from there look with our partners and other community partners to talk about how can we maybe bring a more enriched community center here to Morristown. Um, so that's where we are. Appreciate the support of our residents in improving the budget um, and this group and still uh, supporting that allocation of uh, funds. So we look forward to um, getting the center open next month, moving forward. Uh, as soon as we get some of the kinks out, we'd love to invite uh, the select board down and have an opportunity to see the uh, operation and meet some of the team members. Um, that's my remarks. I, I just wanted to introduce myself um, and once again thank both the, the residents and select board for uh, their continued support during uh, this little bit of a trying time uh, with the community center. But it's an asset that uh, I think is very valuable. That's why we got into it um, to really uh, continue with uh, our mission of improving health outcomes here in Illinois County. So I thank you for your time. Yeah, that sounds great. I know, I know you weren't here at the time, but there were some questions around the allocation that sure. had been given, you know, voted by the taxpayers on town meeting day and given to E, e equals MC squared and what, what that money, where it went, you know, during sure. the COVID time and, and going forward. And I know we had heard there, there'd been some renovations to the building yep. that happened. And, and it's good to know that, you know, where this money is going to be used sure. for, you know, because it was, it's a big deal to have funds like that given yes. yep. by the taxpayers. Um, so what I can share, <clears throat> excuse me, what I can share with you is some of those renovations that you're talking about uh, upstairs, there's a kitchen area that they renovated, have new appliances in there. Believe it or not, uh, or at least to me, I found this interesting. So with the middle schoolers, the number one thing that they're looking for is a cooking club. Um, so what we're gonna, our plan there is to um, have some of our team work and develop a, a little cooking club up there. Obviously we're gonna teach them. Like, supervision. Healthy, yeah, well, supervision <laughs> as well, yes. Um, but they've made some of those renovations. Uh, also had an opportunity to meet with Gary Gore uh, a couple of weeks ago. He's making some uh, renovations to the building that are required there. Gave us some good ideas on some of the space in the back. Uh, to provide uh, some additional space for the kids, kind of keep them out of the street. Um, and uh, I will tell you uh, from a liability perspective, they're all up to date. So they've been paying their utilities, rent, et cetera. So, um, you know, that's, that's the best okay. I can tell you where the, where the money went. Where the money's going to go is we're going to um, have um, staff down there. As I mentioned, there's not going to be a fee, there is going to be uh, snacks. Because uh, we know not everybody um, is coming from the same background, right? So when it's down there, we want it to be as homogeneous as, as possible. Uh, there will be a code of conduct uh, that will ask all the students to kind of sign up for mm -hmm. um, to do that. Um, just so um, really it, it's about a safe place to, to come. And it's not a place, uh, pardon the expression, for a lot of monkey business and just come down and, and shoot hoops. Um, the funding from the, the town um, is a good portion of the budget. Uh, I've talked to a couple of uh, private foundations. So we have two private foundations, each making a $10,000 donation for the year. Uh, the Loyal County Mental Health has uh, kicked in some funds, uh, and uh, we're working with uh, both uh, Lamoya South uh, and Laraway will be kicking in some funds along with the funds that we'll be kicking in. So, we have it fully funded for April through December of this calendar year, um, and we'll always continue. Uh, we're in this for the long haul. As I mentioned, 
Um, you know, our vision is once we get this up and running, uh, working with Eric and Trisha and, and the rest of the team, and what are some of the other needs for our community, and how can that community center either help or be a catalyst for additional uh, services or ideas for us to provo provide, excuse me, a nice infrastructure for our community. Yeah, that sounds good. I know you brushed on it for a second, but one of the issues that came before us was uh, playing basketball in the streets sure. there, and there was some safety issues around that. Yep. Uh, I'm sure you're probably aware of that, but that's one thing to look look out for for the future and planning and everything. Um, the other thing I wanted to add is uh, you might consider uh, soliciting again Concept Two, who does a lot of giving to that group. Yep. And um, we haven't seen I haven't seen anything from them, but. Oh. Yeah, no, we, um, we'll be talking with them. They uh, also, um, on other endeavors through the Lamoy Health Partners, have been great community partners in providing either some equipment, um, expertise, yeah. or financial support. Great. Any questions from any of the board? No, members? I just know that I was uh, not totally involved with the, We had two groups going on, one at EMC, E equals MC squared, and now at the former Congregational Church. We had a youth group there. Okay. And and um, that the kids would come to the one at the church because of the food, so you hit on a really good thing there. Yeah. It also was um, a different group of kids that went to the church. They were major, mainly the marginalized students. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm sure with all your partnerships that you have, you're going to be watching that for that group coming in. Yeah, yeah, and and that's an important piece uh, that you touched on, Judy. There's um, we have a very diverse community. Um, and everything doesn't fit into the same square peg. Um, so that's why there is a, a code of conduct that we kind of talked about healthy Lamoya Valley and some of their um, expertise that they're going to bring in helping us uh, reaffirm some healthy choices for our adolescents to be making. When, when we have that during the, during the time frame that we're open, Everything kind of shuts down, and, you, and everybody will come to that. So it's important for everybody to hear that. Um, and then from there, between our behavioral mental health team and Lamoya County Mental Health, um, our uh, our team members are used to seeing some of these kids, working with some of these kids there, um, also being able to do that environmental scan. So we're going to use that as an opportunity. Um, you know, as a quick aside, we've been working with both Lamoya North and Lamoya South. Um, in the schools, um, particularly around those behavioral mental health issues, and where else can we, while the students are there in that academic setting, help to uh, get them a, a little closer to the center line, if you will. I'm just so very excited that this is happening. I, you know, I'm excited. I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll be quite honest. Uh, as I said, 90 days ago, we started working on it when the team first brought it to me. I said, the community center. I said, listen, we take a holistic approach to improving health outcomes, but I don't get it. Um, I'm new to Vermont. I've only been here uh, two years, and um, I didn't realize right next to Ryan's office, that park, I thought it was still an active school. And I see a lot of kids playing down there, and then I find out actually a lot of kids are quote unquote hanging out, um, and vaping is real big um, with our kids. Um, so that was my aha moment that I said, you know what, let's get a safe, let's get another safe hub here, yeah. um, and just move forward. So, That's great. Just as excited to you. Thank you. But I appreciate it. Thank you. Well, thank you for coming. Thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Stuart, I just have oh, a sorry. It sounds yes. like a great program. Oh, God, I'm sorry. Yeah, you mentioned uh, Matt Young in the middle school yes. several times. Is it focused at that age? Is that the age group? You're so the age on? group we're going to go at is the middle school and high school uh, level. What we want to work with the school, because we're not educators, a little concerned when you have a sixth grader and a twelfth grader. Right, so how do we do that? Space is kind of defined. Um, so we're kind of working through that. But right now, our focus has been with the middle schoolers, but we're not going to uh, exclude those high schoolers. And, and how many how many kids do you think would be involved in this? What, what's your guess on? You know, that's a great question. And, and you're the first person through the whole 90 days that has asked about that. We're hoping for about 20 to 25 right now. Um, some of it is, you know, people have found other avenues. <coughs> Um, the other piece is, as I said, we're, we're kind of getting towards the end of the academic year, so we're starting to think and want to work in conjunction with the town, saying what's going on in the summer for our, our kids and where can we partner up. Um, I, I'm remiss, I, I missed out word, kind of get out, the folks over at River Arts have contacted us 
have um, said, listen, we'd love to offer an art program. We will volunteer time and, and materials. So it's amazing how the community's coming together. But right now, what we're planning is hopefully out of the gate about 20 to 25. Um, and still kind of figure out how we handle, as I said, that middle school and high school interaction. I think you're going to find that uh, saying, if you build it, they will come. It's a pretty strong thing because I remember talking to the previous folks that ran it, and I remember Sonny saying that he had 54 kids, you know, on a, on a regular basis, and they were just blown away. Yeah. You know, it's great. Yeah. And, you know, you had mentioned earlier, there is some physical um, constraints with, with, with that location. So we want to manage it and, you know, listen, we started getting 50, 60, 70 kids and maybe time to look for a different location, maybe put older kids at one, yeah. keep the, the younger kids at another, but uh, it's about flexibility, but we're, we're committed for the long run here. That's great. I know there's a question up there. Oh, just a second. Hold on. I know there's a, we have a question up here, right? Oh, I think Trish answered it. I don't think the question. Oh. They wanted, um, somebody wanted to know if the venue was going to be rented, and Trish said that right now that we're going to look at the youth-oriented um, program. Yeah, the, right now we're not looking to rent out any space. We want to just kind of get in there and, as I said, work out the kinks. And, and really, we got in this because of our adolescent population. So we know that there's other um, cohorts, other groups uh, in our community that need a place and, and such. And um, But if, if anybody's looking just for conference room space for meeting or anything, um, you can contact us. We have some uh, space up in our Morrisville campus on Washington Highway. We'd be more than glad to make that available to I think the point too is still you have some uh, some folks in the community that might not fit the, the youthful description that uh, would love very much to be involved as a mentor from the older generation. Uh, some may have skills such as ping pong that uh, they tell I have there. heard about that. They're they're very good at I have not seen it proven yet. But, uh, we're working on it. I will not be playing any ping pong. I figure. Right? You guys are out there, but you know that's great. And probably uh, through Trish, we'll uh, see how we uh, make some of those outreaches to those that can help uh, support and looking. And we, we have a new rec director hopefully coming on soon. Too, yeah, so I, I'm really excited about that. I don't want I don't want to get uh, too far ahead of ourselves, but would love to um, really collaborate with Eric and the team. And now that we have that position, say what can we really, you know join forces, so to speak, and, and combine. It, it, it really is a team effort. Um, I'm not going to bore you with how we ended up with the Lamoy Health Partners, but it's really that last piece of our name, Partners. It's about par partnerships internally and externally, um, and that's the way you, you make accomplishments. Yes. Anthony, you had a comment? How much money is the town on the hook for this? How much was it, the allocation? 15,000. It grew from a small amount, too. That was uh, an amount that was uh, brought up and raised on the floor of town meeting. It was. Yeah. Yeah. It was. It was raised. Yeah. On the floor, I remember being there, and it was. It started smaller, even uh, but the it first one was. A lot higher than, than most petitions have started. Mm. Right. Right. Go ahead, Laura. Oh. Hi, I'm Laura Straits. I'm glad to hear you're doing this. However. I think this sets a very bad precedence um, where um, that somebody, these funds were originally agreed upon based on who was running it in different hours and lots of things. Um, and especially because this is one of the highest, I think we're setting a very bad precedence in the fact that these are never reviewed. Um, and these are comments that have come to me that once you get this money, it's for perpetuity. There's no limits. So I think anybody now can just roll over and it becomes this. I think it becomes confusing. Um, and I think it's certainly time that the select board, um, Stowe just did this for the exact same reason that we can't just, the taxpayer money cannot be an open pocketbook. Um, and so if something like this happens, I firmly believe that they should reapply um, and that allocations that should be done based on, you know, the number of hours, because again, they had a lot of different hours. They had staff, lots of different things. Um, but they're, you know, I write grants all the time. I have one out for the Morrisville uh, Farmers Market right now with the feds. There are very, very established standards of how you apply for money. There are matrix. 
um, that you have to originally supply uh, for qualifications, uh, lots of other things. We don't have that. Uh, I know that Stowe just went through this and put in this matrix systems to evaluate uh, for qualifications and, um, uh, and then money is allocated based on different qualifications. Um, so this might very well be the time to do that. I think the taxpayers, this makes transparency. How are these people evaluated? How are the decisions made? And that should all be printed. Everything I file is public information, not for profit. And when I get when I apply for a grant, that it will come back to me and it will show me the matrix of where. And there are basic things like, you know, when we we are setting up a bad precedence when not for profits become so dependent on the town, you're not setting them up for success. Um, we all want to support services, but at the same time, um, you know, for us to completely be funding, and there's got to be some equability and accountability. So I think I would love to see the select board start that process, get some folks in here who are experienced grant people. You have amazing people in town that can build these matrix, build the process, and we start evaluating and looking at it because the taxpayers do not want to be an open pocketbook. Well, Thank you. Yeah, I have to disagree with what you said because for many, many years, the folks would come to town meeting and we would ask them to have a representative come who's getting the money and they explained before we voted on it, they'd explained and gave why. And, and even before town meeting, we would go over that list and say, okay, we wanna make sure that these folks still need the money. We'd invite them, maybe they didn't come to the meeting, but they'd explain their cause. And in fact, they did need the money again. There were some that were out of the area. We found out, oh, well, you do use it in Lamoille County. So it's not they're never checked on. We, we've checked them for years. Where's the information for the taxpayers that are getting the money? It's and happened right at town meeting. Fact, it's all right here. That's just a, a blurb. That's not. It's not. Right. It, it's very the, accurate. It's very accurate. Well, the. I mean, and this was voted, not. These things get raised at town meeting I, by the taxpayers. And I was also there four years ago. There was It was highly controversial. And people uh, asked about it and complained. And. When you have 200 people who show up at the town meeting and basically decide, um, and nobody wants to be the bad guy, and that's what everyone says, is nobody wants to say, no, I don't want that. They, they are expecting the select board to do their due diligence um, and to qualify these people. And that's all we're asking for. We do. we do and we have. Thank for many years. I think there's like two separate, may I interject here? Yeah. It sounds like there's two separate questions that Laura's asking. One is about the process that the nonprofits go through right. to apply for the funding. And she, and it sounds like, if I'm correct, that what you're saying is that it's not as formalized as a process as it would be to apply for a grant elsewhere. And what and other towns so, are doing, the industry standard. No one. So, okay, okay I, yeah. I hear you. I, yeah. I'm just, I'm just um, reflecting what you're saying and trying to make sure that I understand what you're saying. And then the, so the, what you're asking for is can the town put into place a process so that each nonprofit is um, putting forth their matrix of, it's usually a budget, and, yeah. and then um, their projected um, expenses, you know, based on whatever criteria we put forth for their, their grant, you know, the, the money that we grant them. Um, the other issue, and that sounds doable to me, that doesn't sound like too onerous. Um, it doesn't have to be super complicated. No. Um, the second issue, I think, may um, is is that you're you're concerned that, like for instance, this year because ballots were vote, were mailed out, everyone had to <clears throat> blanket approve every single that that whole that it was one article <laughs> for every single nonprofit that the town funded. And that was not that was not ideal. Usually, what right. Bob's saying is that we would be Vote on separately the yeah. from the floor, each, each item, item, and there's yeah. people to talk about it, and everyone hears that what they yeah. use that money for. Right. Everybody is there. Granted, it's only 200 people, yeah. but that's what what runs towns. Town meeting is getting smaller and smaller. But 200 people make yeah. decisions for millions of dollars all across the state. So what are so what are the yeah. other ways that we so can do it? The, like, uh, so the other issue is is that it's in perpetuity and there's no limit. So. That I'm questioning if that's true because every year the, each nonprofit has to come back and ask for the money. They do, correct? and each year. Well, you, they, no, they don't. They every three every once year. they're on, but we we check them. We go through the list when when it first comes out, and we say, okay, does this person still exist? This group, 
We want to talk to them, make sure they still want the money, what they're going to use it for. We've done this for quite a few years now. Right. And then some people, like I know, for instance, like the farmer's market didn't, um, like you have to have a certain number of, right. of, of signatures. And if you don't make the cutoff, then you just don't make the cutoff. Right. right? And it's, well, and that, this, that was an unusual situation. Okay. But in talking to people out in town, um, and in, when they were trying to get the, um, the signatures for the Morrisville Farmer's Market, people repeatedly said, this is in perpetuity and there's no limits. So the town people don't understand. And having been at that meeting, I remember um, this person standing up and asking for $5,000. And no one wants to stand up and say no, you, you know. And so you're putting people in a very bad position. So if the select board set limits, and now you've got, you know, some people getting a thousand, now you've got other, you know, um, at the time there were two people getting $15,000. And so where's it going to stop? And that person even said they were coming back for more money. And so it just, it puts, a, it's just puts people in a very bad, and because I've, I've been at those town meetings and it gets ugly and it gets to, people are angry about it. And I think what's happening now is when um, with Morrisville Farmers Market, we were getting uh, pushback because people were like, nope, it's out of control. I don't want to do it. And it, if we're going to go to town uh, votes eventually, which is what the state is proposing, the governor wants us to go to ballots, <clears throat> you know, if there's a way to do a line item, because people will, will, I guarantee you will do differently if they're choosing. They're not, no one wants to stand up and be the bad guy at town meeting. Right. I, I agree that that's the only thing I agree with you is that it all should be yeah. separate line item yeah. because of COVID, because of the way the voting happens, it couldn't be. And you're right. If you approve one, you approve them all. And I disagree with that too. For but, most of the years of town meeting, they were all voted as one. They were asked at the beginning. Yeah. I was okay. going to say, I don't remember so, going through. So this yeah. is the people's yeah. people. Yeah. We didn't do it. They do it. And to get on that list, they have to get a petition just like everybody else does right. to get on. So they go out and get enough signatures to get their name put on there. And then the people have the right to vote, yes or no. They can vote the whole thing right. down. But and there has been four votes where it's been like, okay, you've gone around county. I remember Sarah doing it. Well, where... and again, the process, you're saying that they have to come through every three years. People don't know that. I didn't know that. I have looked on the website. There's nothing that says. Go ahead. Can I, can yeah. I interrupt just quick? Sure. So, um, to explain a little bit of the process, the select board has a written policy and procedure. There is a written policy and procedure in place. It is on the website. It's on the town clerk website. It's under election. I was trying to be really clear and transparent. Yeah. So there's okay. 11 different tabs with everything. So it's under the petition. Okay tab and it talks about it and it talks there's link to the secretary of state's office about getting petitions but really what um so if you want to there's also state statute that you have to follow so i don't think that you can limit the amount um but the select board could require people to come year by year to do a petition mm -hmm. I, that's been discussed at so we have that. discussed it so you don't think it, you can put a set amount I don't believe so. I think that um, the, the people writing the petition can do that initial petition for the amount that they want. I don't. Because I know Stowe just went through this, and Lisa Haggerty, who has a master's degree from Harvard in business, just oversaw theirs because this exact same thing was we that the taxpayers cannot have an open uh, thing. So I'm not sure. I tried to see what to find out what's what so happened Stowe with Stowe. Have a, Stowe might have a charter. So like your question Still does have a charter. Me, so Still has a charter. a charter. Then you can adopt different rules for your community. Right. Morristown doesn't have a charter, so we have to follow state statute. So technically, anybody can ask for any amount of money. And it can be amended by the from the floor, like like Lamoille County Food Chair has many times. It's gone from one thousand dollars to I think that's fifteen thousand now. That's yeah, another so one. Anybody can yeah. initially the petition wow. can be for any amount to get on the ballot. If a if a valid petition is submitted timely, then it goes on the ballot regardless if the select board is in favor of it or not. Right. And then it goes to the voters to choose um, if they want to approve it or not. Wow. But then whether or not you require a petition year by year is up to the po the the select board and right. their policy and whether or not they're lumping them all together or one by one is up to the select board and their policy. Don, you had a comment. So this is the 
this is the article that always gets yeah. the most attention. It is. Uh -huh. here, here we are tonight getting, yeah. getting a lot of We spent two hours on yeah. on town meeting and we get hours and hours of attention. And I remember all those heated debates. And I, I maybe Sarah, you've already answered this, but I, I don't know if there's anyone on the board that's familiar with what Stone's doing. It sounds like Sarah might be a little bit familiar with what's going on down there. Or I've certainly seen right. But they are different because they have a charter. Yeah. And, I don't know what Stone's there, doing. Should we, should we perhaps as a board take a look at what they're doing and see if there is some way to clarify this and bring a little bit? Maybe um, some other towns too. I'd, well, I'd and like to, I'd like to right now, we have Stewart's here doing a presentation. Yeah. And we're yeah. kind of like, like we're, we're, we're kind of, Taking a bird walk here. Could yeah. we let yeah. let Stuart go? <laughs> so, yeah, I'm not I'm not trying to attack you. So, I just no, 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 so no. I think you're I think you're I don't want you to get pushed back because people are angry about the process from before. And I think that might happen. Is that you know who was this and it just you know oh great you can just roll you know you get this money and all of a sudden it just keeps rolling over, you know and I and sure. I think you're doing great things and I don't want you to be penalized because of other things. Yeah. No, and, and you know, one of my uh, little mantras are in the absence of communication, you create a higher level of anxiety. So yeah. We're gonna let the community know what's going yeah. on down there um, and appreciate the, the support yeah. this year. And, you know, uh, we'll take a look at it next year and uh, mm -hmm. maybe we won't, won't need as much from uh, the town. And, yeah. you know, this is, last year was $120,000 and we're talking about roads. And, you know, and again, we brought up the question that, um, and, you know, this was an unusual year with the pandemic that places were just closed. And that let's, just let's, breeds speculation. Can we, is can what, we just so. let Stuart finish his presentation? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Harold. Thank you. Harold. Yeah. Yes, sir. I just Thank had you. a question as to who the contact person is now, or do you wait until a coordinator is chosen to run the unit? Um, you can contact my office. I'll be more than glad to give you that phone number. Okay. Sure. He wants to be a ping pong instructor. <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> He's Anthony. Not anything for me. <laughs> so <clears throat> I've been up and down the East Coast for the last 45 years, not west of the Mississippi, and I've never seen one of these centers work. Okay. Even though he's only proposing 25 kids or whatever he's doing here. They don't work. I, I have to I have to disagree with you because we okay. had one going at the United Community Church, the former congregational church. It worked very well. It was a very small group of students who came who were in need, who were marginalized, and it worked extremely well for those kids. And what he's doing is providing a service for kids across the board, and we're in desperate need of that. He just talked to you about the kids uh, um, congregating in a special place wherever, and they're vaping. And I bet you if we talk to the police officers, we'd find out there's a lot more going on than we're very aware of. So, so why These is things it that, do work. Well, why is it, for what I see, they go for two or three years, and all of a sudden they close because they, they're... Uh, I, I don't they, know because what Actually, talking. because they're completely trashed. I don't know what you're talking about. There's a Boys and Girls Club that, that are all over the United States who are working very successfully. And this sounds like it's very similar to how those, those uh, organizations are run. So there is a great need for our adolescents to have structured um, places to go between the time school lets out and parents are home from work. That's the most dangerous time for these kids. And, and he's going to be help provide a place for them. Not only do they have activities to do, but there's going to be a mental health workers there for them too. So I'm I'm excited about. Well, this. I'm a proponent of parents bringing up their own kids for one. Well, yeah, but, okay. yeah, but parents have to work. You know, like if you work, you're. At well, work parents are working less now because they're working at home. I I'm certainly. I mean, I not work, everybody. I work in a school. I mean, most parents are working until at least four or five o'clock. I I work. You know, I we all have to work. And where do you where do you what do you do with your kids between the time they get out of school and you're well, these home? places aren't daycares. They shouldn't well, be. So I mean, if, if, school if, is a form of daycare. You know, I mean, like we are looking after children. Now, now we got a country that wants to. That now we got a country that wants us to pay for daycare. There's something wrong with that, and I'm going to leave it at that. Well, we 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 no longer have a financial structure exactly. that allows that allows yeah. one parent to stay at home, and that was a wonderful thing when before inflation that people could afford to buy a house, afford to buy a piece of land, 
and afford to have one parent stay at home. But that is not the reality anymore. The well, cost of living is way too high. We're getting back in that because people are staying at home because they're working at home, right? You cannot work at home and raise your child at the same time. No. <laughs> if, I could, if I could just briefly. We don't have time for this. Uh, a couple of things. One, this is not daycare. No, no, I understand. So, you you got a good program going, and I hope it works. No, it, it, I really hope it works. It, it will, and I, I I'll make sure we get a uh, but, maybe but, an invite to come down. But, but what I will say is, community centers do work in communities, and it's not just about adolescents. The strength of the community center is really providing an additional infrastructure to all parts of the community to move forward. They have worked uh, real well in a lot of rural areas throughout our, our country. I've been associated in other states with them, and it really is about what you put together. And it's really that balance between the um, physical side, the educational side, and if you will, the uh, medical side, be it if it's uh, behavioral, mental health issues. Um, sometimes some kids, for whatever reason, never make it to a dentist or anything. So sometimes some of these community centers become a point of access for hygiene and checkups like that. So. No, I, good program. Thank you. Is it for the village kids or what? Because where I live right now, my kids, if I had kids, they couldn't get there because the road's too bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to stay away from that. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Stuart. Thank you, Stuart. All right. Where are we now? Uh, I think it's time to move on. Let's move on. Todd, you've been quiet back there. Can you help me out? I live in the village. <laughs> and you don't have kids. <laughs> <I> have kids. <laughs> so we're going to do the town plan oh, discussion. Break it up. Right. Uh, so pages uh, 11, uh, sorry, 10 through 12 remedies package. These are some uh, minor town plan changes. Eric worked with LCPC to come to this point for these changes. The planning council signed off on the last week. The uh, village trustees signed off on the last week as well. So. We'll need to get to the point where we have a matching town plan and then we'll warn another potential last hearing, but maybe not. We'll cross that bridge when we get here. For now, we need to try to discuss pages 11, 12, and 13. And the changes are in red. Okay. Um, so we have a black and white copy. We have black and, and white. We don't have any red. Um, so, and I, and my big question, I had some email earlier, was what had we approved before and what is different now? I, I might have another copy that I can cross-reference, but. So what I'm assuming what you're taking out has been crossed out and what is going to be there is the bold. That's the stuff we have to concentrate on. Okay. That's what I thought. So anything crossed out, correct? It's change. Correct. Um, why was LCPC against? Um, so at some point we had the language in there about um, supporting the placement of landscape bridge or wildlife overpass, or a large mammal underpass, or modified culvert to ensure that. Uh, Restoring the long-standing 50 mile an hour speed limit in the area, if shown as warranted by a, a VTRANS speed study, does not create an undue adverse impact on the Shootsville Hill Wildlife Cor Corridor. I, I, was I, this was that who who I, requested that addition, and why is that be, being taken out? That's my addition, trying to keep the 50 mile, mile an hour speed limit right. instead of being kept at the, the recently reduced 40 mile an hour speed limit, but. That didn't uh, satisfy anyone, so it didn't uh, didn't stay in. That's why you struck it. Yeah, so LCPC wanted to drop the speed limit on Route 15 where the rail trail crosses uh, down, and they wanted to not increase the speed limit, restore it back to where it was 50, uh, and still going into Waterbury right there. Uh, that was reduced a few years back. So that was me trying to save the language and try to save the commute time for a community. If you know, a good chunk of recommended commutes to the highway, uh, potentially about a third of the community. So when you piecemeal and reduce speed limits here, there, and everywhere, it adds up over time. It's death by a thousand cuts. So uh, a big part of that concern with the speed limit reduction was the wildlife crossing. So that was me trying to offer better ways for the wildlife to cross. Because I mean, if a animal gets hit at 50 or 40, it's not going to matter much. So. Those are more costly, obviously, options in terms of uh, 
the cattle underpass, you know, you've got one on Route 15, for example, by the uh, Tenney Bridge. Yeah. Um, but so that didn't satisfy anyone, so I didn't keep it. Right. And unless you have the area all fenced, the wildlife's going to cross where it wants to anyway. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't think you'd find that thing under the road. I don't know if we have the expertise to know that, but um, because I think wildlife would probably go the, the way that um, is not full of cars, but I, I'm not a biologist or a... Anyway, I was just confused. That's an aside. I'm just, I was just confused, Todd, because I, I didn't see the, um, the land bridge piece um, in the most recent version of the town plan. So did that come up? Between the last hearing and the discussion with LCPC? Correct. That was okay. Got gotcha. you. Okay. About the limit going okay. Got gotcha. you. Okay. Okay. What, one thing I'm, I'm, you need to be aware of is that on the LCPC board are sitting representatives from all towns in, in Lamoille County. So sometimes concerns aren't necessarily LCPC staff, they could be LPC. LCPC board members. Gotcha. Right. Representatives from yes. different towns. Yeah. So this talk is really about protecting that or protecting that 40, 40 mile per hour speed limit in Stella. Or agreeing with LCPC that, that, that we can go along with that. Yeah, we're just basically dropping the store to uh, 50 and leaving small enough alone there. And also, if there is language in here that speaks to um, if speed limits are going to drop, that they be supported in the D-train sense. Correct. I mean, what our, our language in there is actually very narrow. We're just saying if there's going to be uh, a traffic light around about uh, speed reduction, for example, there's a D-train study that goes into it and warranted or not. If they're warranted, if the traffic data supports it, We'll go along with it. Traffic that doesn't support a uh, new roundabout, which we've seen can back up traffic trying to get in from a high park to Morrisville at 8 o'clock in the morning. If it's not warranted, we're going to uh, we're going to talk about it here. It says we object. That's the uh, the water down language. So basically, we're agreeing with the state. We're agreeing with the traffic experts. That's that's where we we're laying our cards, so to speak. And if the community wants to put in. Outside the village, outside of designated downtown, they're trying to put in a roundabout at Moscow Road. That's me trans says this is a mistake. This is not warranted. We're going to object to it because it's going to seriously hurt our commute times, which hinders our viability as a community for commuters who need to get to the highway. That's it, pretty much in a nutshell. So, LCPC spoke to me uh, um, in, in a couple of times in meetings over the last few months about this section in particular. And I emphasize the importance of our being able to, to operate a commute time that was acceptable uh, to folks who live or work outside of this area, but come back here to spend their own. And we wanted to stay attractive to them. And the language that we had there originally used the word, uh, what is it? Opposed. Opposed. We had the word oppose uh, any further slowing of traffic. We felt that was uh, members of the board, I should say that. So members of the board felt that that language was too harsh in that the statute calls for a collaborative effort for communities uh, working together on issues uh, that would impact each other outside their boundaries. So I came back to see Todd, I've come back to see Todd numerous times. There have been significant changes to the original plan since I started meeting with LCPC in uh, addressing concerns that they were bringing to me from their board members. Uh, there have been lots, lots of changes. Most recently, this past week, uh, or the week before, I spoke with Todd in reference to uh, three items. One was the naming of the plan. Our plan had been named the 2020 to 2030 plan. By statute, it's an eight year plan, not a 10 year. So the same plan has been changed to a 22 to 30 plan, so it meets the eight-year criteria. The other one was the historical um, accounting of how the speed was lowered, in that there wasn't uh, the only consideration being the wildlife corridor, that, 
That piece had been in there as a result of their wanting the oil speed all the way to the town line, 40 miles per hour. The trans did the speed study. Speed study didn't rise to the level that definitively said yes when you lower the speed. But a combination of all factors were considered. So there was a consideration for the habitat. There was consideration for the intersection of the safety there and, and the speeds uh, there. So they, they're compromised. They came up with a compromise of the 40 mile per hour zone happening just south of the intersection of Moscow Road. So there was a concern by the uh, LCPC that the reflection in our town plan was not historically completely correct. And uh, at this point in, in, in the, the process, it really was a moot point. I really did not have any significance to the direction of our plan. So we offered to strike the language altogether and eliminate that piece of Congress. And then the last one was the strength of the wording and the collaborative uh, piece in the statute that says we should be working collaboratively with our neighbors. And my argument has been that I can collaborate with my neighbor, but not necessarily agree over every topic that we discuss. And if we can find language that reflects our needs as a community or our wants as a community, and in this case, it's about not increasing our commuter times. And we can state that in such a way that we're not over the top saying, wait, we're just going to put up a fight a lifetime. To oppose something to me was, was pretty strange. It was pretty clear cut. We're going to set our heels and we're going to oppose this. Changing it to object was simply stating that we, are, we have a responsibility to our taxpayers and their the folks that commute and want to make our community still viable commute time and uh, have that point be made. And to object to it, and again, if you, if you see the areas that our language narrows it down to, it's only state highways. The, the language speaks to the areas within the village limits for a downtown designation. Hands off, we, we have no say over it. They want to put another crosswalk, they put another crosswalk, and that's you know, a village safety issue. We, want to think, we aren't going to propose any of that. This simply is saying that on state highways or outside of those those designated downtown areas, that if a community wanted to put in a traffic circle and the state VTRANS on their state highway said it's not warranted based on a speed study, then we would object them doing that. Didn't say we would oppose it, we said we would object, we would voice an objection to it because it's not supported by the speed study. That's how narrow this is. VTRANS has control over their highways. Everything they do is, is scientifically backed with the speed studies and other pieces. So I just don't feel myself that object is a strong word. I don't think I think it's less strong than than oppose. I just think we need to represent our our taxpayers, our, our residents here who, who do commute and make a living outside of our town and, and, uh, and want to keep their commute times. It's, it's a very small part of our town plan. It seems to be getting a lot of attention and it's narrowed down now to a word or two. And I'm sure there's six or eight different ways we could word this and we would make some people happy and other people would not. <coughs> but at this time, I, I present this to you as it is with that word object and if the board it, it's the town plan you're the approval for you if you want that language to be further further softened we're happy to do that i'm, I'm just presenting this to you tonight these are the changes that were made and uh, i feel i feel firmly that uh, we, we have softened the language but continue to represent our, our folks here so a couple of thoughts here. Yeah, somebody made a comment that come to the microphone, but it's or speak louder. So a couple of a couple of things. Um, number one, it is a small part of the plan that's gotten an awful lot of attention. I agree, and as you and you and Todd know, because I've talked to you guys a lot this week, I've been trying to put a lot of time into this plan and you know get familiar with the whole thing. Um, a question I guess I have is, do you think LCPC agrees that if VTRANS supports these changes on the highways, and we are talking about 15 and 100, that's really, we're talking about state highways, we're not talking about anything else, but is LCPC in agreement or are they buying into that concept that 
If VTrans supports a traffic circle, that LCPC would support it. If VTrans supports a raise in the speed limit or a lowering of the speed <coughs> limit, that they would agree with it? I, I would stop way short of trying to answer for LCPC. That would be a question asked okay. for their staff. Um, I, I think that the concern that they're bringing is on behalf of a couple of their board members, not necessarily the staff at LCPC. They have a couple of board members who did not like the language they, they felt. I understand the, the, the passing of the plan of a regional review has a lot to do with the requirements of state statute. If we are in violation of state statute anywhere in our plan, then it can't pass regional review. So the board members that have spoken about their concern for this specific language are speaking to the part of the statute that says that we should make every effort to work collaboratively with our community and neighbors. And the word oppose was too strong. They didn't that felt collaborative to them. So this is an interpretation of Vermont statute and what collaborative would mean to you versus us. I, 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 I don't think that collaborative means you have to agree to everything that everybody says. I think we can collaborate with folks and come to an understanding or compromise um, on things. In this case, it's, it's a word or, or a few words of language that we're not looking to stop what goes on in stuff. We're, we're looking to object if they would do something on a state highway without the V-Trans speed study in place to support it. And I don't think that's too much to ask. I think it's a reasonable request, and I think it's worded properly. It's, we're not condemning Stowe or Johnson or anybody else along that corridor. Um, <coughs> as, as you know, last week I wasn't sure how I stood on this, but having Having listened to Eric and Todd, I, I think it's pretty reasonable myself. Mm -hmm. I think it's good language. Thanks, guys. Anybody else? Um, what? Can I just, sorry, can I just ask one hopefully quick clarifying question? So this just leaves it um, open. Um, if, if a plan, if a, a plan comes up in a, a neighboring community that would reduce the speed limit in a way that would adversely affect us. This just set, says, you know, we're not in support of that, just preemptively. Only if the VTRAN, only if VTRAN says it's not warranted. Okay. If VTRAN says yes. this is a bad idea, if the state right. data doesn't support it, right. we're going to object because right. it's going to negatively impact people coming from this community. And do we actually have a, I guess my we, question we vote, is, we, vote. we do vote, okay. Yes, we okay. vote at through, through, through the Okay. They vote at TAP. I got to vote on the one. I was the only person, it's funny about the 2000, whatever one. I was the only person that's left that was in the room for that vote, so I know what happened with that vote. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. we vote on it. Yeah, okay. Each community votes on it. Okay. Okay, anything else? You need a, I need a motion. Do we need a motion? So, a motion to accept all the changes. The changes as vote, is. yes. Okay. Yeah. And that's the only change that LCPC made? So, yeah, those. Pages. Okay. There's a corresponding change, and the next page of the package is just the uh, the objective. It's the exact same language. On. Oh, got you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So it's just the I put in the whole transportation chapter so you can see it in full. Okay. okay. Yes, yeah, so that's it. Okay. So that means I can't see the calendar, but I can warn if the select board would like to continue to work on the plan or look at other changes. We can have more working sessions. If you're done with the plan and like to warn a hearing as a part of final approval, I can warn that for later in April. That's up to the board, and I can use some direction on that. Because it costs a couple hundred bucks to run a hearing. I've run multiple hearings. I don't want to keep making changes and keep running hearings. I don't have it in my budget. So I'd like to, uh, do you want to put it on the next agenda and talk about it more? Or I just warn a hearing? I'm fine with it. I'm fine with it. Okay. We need a motion. The board? I, I'll make a motion that we. Julie um, already made a motion. Oh, yeah. she did. No, no I don't think I did. I was. Thinking. You made a she motion. She started to. Accept the changes. Oh. First, we have to do that, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And we need to finish. That didn't get second. Okay. Yeah. So we should vote that one. I'll second it. Okay. What are we voting on right now? The changes. Eleven, 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 thirteen. The changes as provided. Okay. Good. Yeah. Is there any further discussion on this motion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Sorry, John, I need to jump the. You need That's okay. Go ahead. I forgot. What's your next motion? Well, that was the motion I was, was going to make. Oh, okay. Oh, That's what he was going to do. Sorry about that. 
I, I think he didn't think that Judy did it, and I didn't either. So, so that means you your second hearing, your second meeting in April, which I think is April 20th? 18th. 18th? I've done for that. So that means you'll have a town plan warrant hearing that night. <clears throat> you're potentially your last one. You don't make any changes. Uh, do you want 6 o'clock, 6.30, 7 o'clock? Do you know with? 6 o'clock. 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 I might be um, in Serbia. Yeah, <laughs> there's also it's also spring break, and I, um, for the local schools, um, I I don't think I'll be in town. I can put. I'll, how about this? I'll push it back to the next. I can push it back to the first meeting in May. That would mean the trustees are going to act first, though. That's okay with you guys. So we. Oh, because they'll be in. They'll do it in April. They'll do it first. Yeah. Okay. All right. So May second. Yeah, your first meeting. Yeah, May second. May second, I'll be here. I think. You will Depends if I go to Serbia and if I'm back from Serbia. <laughs> so you'll be gone on the 25th as well? Yeah, I've gone 10 days. I'm supposed to be back that Sunday, but that's... You don't know. Do you want to zoom in at 3 in the morning? Sure. All right. Yeah, there's seven hours ahead. I could do that. Yeah, let's go for it and we'll see. I, I'm supposed to be back right, on that Sunday. for seconds, 6 o'clock. So do we need to make another another motion? No, I'm, I'm good. I'll, I'll do that on my okay. Thank you. So okay. May May 2nd for the public forum? May 2nd. Mm -hmm. What version is that now? Where are we at? 27? This is 30th, I believe. Oh, 30th. Missed right. <laughs> Slight well, revision. 31 tomorrow morning. I finished these. Well, okay. I was thinking we could call a special meeting and get it over with, too. I need to, uh, I can't warrant a hearing for at least 15 days after the change you made tonight, so if you want to do a special meeting in April, you can, but yeah. earlier, but I can't do one at the end of the month. No, so. I'm all right with the May 2nd, but okay. I'm ready to get it done. You are? Yes. Me too. <clears throat> okay. Thanks, Todd. I'm, I'm your next agenda item as well. Oh, perfect. Stay here, then. Review and sign rules of procedure for jointly appointed subordinate committees and boards. So last meeting, Jess had uh, asked to inquire uh, regarding appointments. So the two boards that mainly staff, planning and DRV, are the two unique boards in town because we still have a village government and my boards are jointly appointed by planning and, I'm sorry, by select board and trustees. So in 2012, we first came up with this written uh, kind of process to guide how these appointments would happen because it seemed to be every time we had a DRB or planning appointment, we we're doing a whole different process or interviews of this board, this board didn't interview, this board didn't pass that person. So this tried to codify it a little bit. So this was first approved by the Select Board of Trustees in 2012. And the 2016 version you're seeing only makes very minor changes because some minor updates kind of based on practice. I can't see where the, the select board signed off on that, so that's why it's on your agenda tonight. So when Jess asked the question, uh, the 2016 one, I have an email to talk about passing, but I can't find where you all signed it. <laughs> so I saw it on the website after your last meeting. So uh, the thought process was to put it on the agenda tonight and go from there. And if you want to make additional changes, uh, it's time to be right to do it. What pages are in my 20, 20, 20 and 21. We're not there yet. Oh, I think we are there. Um, we're 17 and 19. Yeah. Those are just the uh, reporting form that goes to the town plan. Right. Yeah. That's not, uh, that's not part of the, 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 the right. town plan stuff. Yeah, it's the last unit. So, um, so my first question is, so my big, um, my big area, I think, of, um, of concern, um, based on what I've been hearing from the public, is um, around board vacancies. And so I'm looking at number nine, and then that refers back to number four. So I'm looking at pages 20 and 21. So um, the vacancies um, section says, 
The chair of all jointly appointed subordinate boards and committees shall notify the Morrison Select Board and the Morris, Morrisville Village trustees of any vacancy within his sick, which I would change to their board or committee within one week from said vacancy taking place. Said vacancy shall be filled um, by via the number four appointment process for the remainder of the term. But then the, uh, um, the appointment process just says, any jointly appointed subordinate board and committee that does the business of Morristown and Morrisville shall be appointed by a majority of each legislative, legislative body. Um, I, I think we need to add something in there about the process by which um, vacancies are announced um, publicly and um, the process by which people um, put their names in and that record is kept and where that record is um, available. And also, let's do a find and replace for anything that says just his, and change it to something more gender, gender neutral. Seeing his that or her. Ju Judy and I, his or her. I think we'd be safer saying there. Um, yeah. Then we get everyone in there. Jess, that's what I remember you talking about last week or two weeks ago as well. And yeah. I had made the same marks beside number four and number nine, and because yeah. most of this document is just about procedure about how these how these you know committees are working and and how they're doing their thing as opposed to how people are getting on the on the committees and our, uh, most of our discussion was about the vacancies opening up and how people find out about the about it and how they get their names in in, in a timely way to be considered for uh, appointment and so I was not that this solves all the problems, but I was thinking under number four that there would be something where if somebody in the community was interested in being on, the, let's say, the planning council, just use that as an example, that they would put their name in and that their name would be put on some kind of a waiting list for 12 months. At the end of 12 months, if a vacancy, hasn't, at one point, if a vacancy hasn't appeared, that their name would be taken off the list. But there would be some kind of a standing yeah. list available right. for this for the board to DRP's look at. Open so or MCC's open or whatever. Because if there's a, clear, this is a select board and trustee list. This is in my list. Correct? Right. I just want to make sure we're yeah right. right. Okay. Sure. But there be some kind of a list, and and then those people can be considered yeah. pretty pretty quickly, rather than. Putting an announcement out on a front porch forum yeah, or right. something like Ask that. Wait, first. Right. right. Yeah. right. But that's so a list. What happens is I have an open seat, send Eric, well, the town administrator and Penny, uh, the general manager of the village, an email, send a vacancy. Usually the administration puts a front porch forum post out and you invite people to respond to interviews and you see who shows up. And generally it's not much. Right. right. And I, what we've been hearing, um, or I, I'll say for myself, what I've been hearing is that there are people who have put their names in through the website um, and haven't heard when a vac vacancy comes up or they haven't even gotten a confirmation. Like everyone knows that experience of like filling out the form on the website and then you might get a confirmation like an auto re reply, but you don't feel necessarily like you actually had a human who saw your name and put it somewhere that's going to get looked at. So. Um, I can't speak to that. No, no, no. I'm not. I, yeah, I'm not expecting you to. I'm just saying, like, from the user end, that's what people are saying. I think that's fine going forward. We can do that on yeah. the list. And yeah, if you want to add a sentence to there about um, under number four about uh, town administrator or good general village general manager shall look at a list or keep a list for 12 Keep months. a list. Whatever you want to add is fine. I like yeah, that. I, drop it up. You know, yeah. I don't know if it'll help, but I certainly can do it. Let me know. Right. Let people. Um, and that, that that list is publicly available, like, and I don't know where we where we put it or, you know, where we post it. I don't know if the list would be, be available, but the availability would be available. Right. Right. So, right. Yeah. right. The vacancy availability yeah. should be positions, yeah. not people, right? posted, right. not the people's names yeah. of yeah. who wants to do it. And remember what number four is also saying to clarify is if you want to get on planning of the DRB, you have to be appointed by a full board. It's not mm -hmm. a, it's not by a majority of full board. It's right. not a oh I have five select board members working for me, one trustee, that's six, that's good enough. It's full boards, you don't right. get the seat. Right. We've had that happen before. We have. Select boards the first people in the village trustees have struck them down. That's right. We've I've seen it two or three times. Yep. It's actually somewhat difficult. 
<laughs> and then were you thinking, Don, you're saying um, the list gets exhumed every 12 months. Does that, would we, would we just do that like, okay, this is the year that, you know, this is the year that your name's on the list, or do we, do we take everyone off within 12 months of them submitting their name? I, I would say if I put my name in on March 21st, uh -huh. that next year, March 21st, it my name's no longer on sure. the list. That's, okay. That would be the easiest thing for us. Okay. Yeah. And if yeah. March 22nd, a vacancy pops up, I'm yeah. not on the list because yeah. I wouldn't. And they could be long. told that too, so if they want to be on the list again, they can call again or whatever. Or maybe they got a notification. Yeah. Can they get a notification? Right before? No, it's a little. Yeah. It's, I should know I'm on the list, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you should know you're on the list for a year. So right. if you're interested after that. You just want to bring some reality to the conference. I know, I know. Yeah, I, know. Hey. Uh, I, I, I don't have a problem with this list at all. I don't think I have any great idea. I'm, I'm just going to tell you that if I want to have to leave myself some reminders and email to monthly check the list Thank you. as people come up on their expiration date yeah. and should this case help these. Right. It, it might get overlooked. Right, so that's what I'm, I'm thinking. Not sure is, I've inspected the fire extinguisher yet this month. Right, <laughs> right. Uh, why not? Million little things Denny's not happy about that. So, uh, well, that should be a, so. So should it just be like instead of you having to look at that every every month to see like who comes in when, just say like you get on the list for 2022 and then it's like wiped off on this date. Everyone like so you may be on the list for like a month if you get on in at the end of 2022 and then. I'm okay with the date. I don't know. Huh? Yes, I'm okay with the, the yeah. date assigned, the date that they send the mail, the oh. message. Right. Um, because if we do it on the calendar, you're like, if somebody can submit their name in December, and then January 1st, we expunge the list. Right. So I yeah. want to keep people on there the year. I just, it may be when a vacancy happens, then I pull the list up and go, okay, well, that person is past the year. They didn't call or reaffirm or something. Right. They're done. They're, they're, they're off done. The list. Yeah. That's Rather good. than leaving up the onus upon us to reach out to them and say, hey, you're expired, you want to put your name back. I just no. don't want to be caught yeah. up on that. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, no, want, no, I don't no. want you to do that either. I can also write it so the select board and trustees shall uh, shall inquire if any applicants have, been, have uh, applied for an open seat on said board within the prior year. So it's on both town administrator, general manager of the village, and the select board. So in here it says, before you make the appointment, you're supposed to check that list. Yeah. If you like, that way the double. Yeah. Double, uh, double check. Can it double be check. a shared document that we just have access to look at? We we are not yeah, allowed. allowed. Yeah. We're not. We don't okay. use Google products. Mm -hmm. Right. Can't do it. You can't do it. I've been there before. I can't do it. It's a bummer. I would love to be there. Yeah. I would love to yeah. be there. <laughs> but I think I'm one of the only ones no, that I'm, would like to be It'd be very there. helpful, but no, I can't do it. Hmm. We can't do that without love or our current, yeah. You would know. No. Yeah. So, Todd, you need us to sign this? Uh, no, at this point, I'm going to make changes. I'll have that okay. sentence okay. and I'll do the is it for their, their uh, mm -hmm. changes and then I'll bring it back to your next meeting and you guys can sign it then. Uh, Sounds good. So, no more. Well, as Ramaz <coughs> as, 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 as we discussed, so you can avoid agenda and check me as I do. Do you want to? Make a motion on it, then? I'd rather see um, it in writing. See it in writing? Yeah. I'd rather wait. Okay. Okay. I'd like to make it all out time. Remember, we call. Yeah, yeah. We'll work on this together and get the language right. And uh, we can send it out for review. Uh, I know the meeting is that would be an individual response. Then we say language is OK. If there's a language change you want to suggest, there's a problem with the business on the meeting. So okay. I'll send it out to the group. But just respond back and yep. Sounds good. Yeah, I'll read my 15 more. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Todd. No problem. Anything else? That's all I got for it. Okay. We'll move to number four review and assign, review and sign Morristown Declaration of Inclusion. This was the uh, Declaration of Inclusion that you folks discussed at the last meeting and approved. We took it from the town of Waterbury and made great changes to it. <laughs> <laughs> Took the word marks down and inserted it with the word library list. And we have it here for you to read and sign if you would, please. Do we need a motion for this? Yes. Yes, you are. That's the computer. Yeah, I, I've got a copy of it. I here. like that. I like that simple one. Um, I like this too. I wonder if I wonder if we could just change one word um, without having to put this on the agenda one more time. Um, I saw some slow blinks, but bear with me. Um, as a town, we 
We formally condemn discrimination in all its forms and commit to fair and equitable treatment of everyone in our community. Uh, equitable, you can yeah. change it to that. Yeah. yeah. Because equal treatment would be like saying, right. so someone in a wheelchair um, rolls up and can't get in the building. Equitable. Well, everyone has access to the stairs, and it's not equitable. Yeah. So, equitable is a yeah. better word. Okay. Good job, Jess. Thank you. We can do that. We can, but we don't have access to the documents. So well, do we know where Sarah has it? Okay. Um, <laughs> you can if, we, if you write it in, and we all initial it, and yeah. then sign it. Yeah. It's right. just like any legal document. No. You can. I'd rather you hang out for five minutes yes. after the meeting. Sure. And oh, we can do that. I can do. Yeah. I'm, I'm just telling you it's legal. I'm going to text Sarah. Just in case. That's <laughs> weird. <laughs> it's an important document. And the workforce has on file with the signatures on yep. dates, everything correct. Yep. I, I don't want to have anything. Yep. That's good. Okay. Before you move on, I asked a question. Where was the seven thing in the 19th? There was a, well, those two pages were a part of the previous discussion on the town plan. Yeah. They, they are, it wasn't well, the They, they are, sorry? they're in there. There was no changes. There was no changes. No, so we didn't, we didn't have to make any changes. Yeah, it was the same. Wow. Is this the way the, the uh, planning commission makes the report? Because I look at this, if this was in the town plan, this is the program uh, zoning changes that uh, haven't been made yet. If you look at all the, uh, the details of the witness reporting uh, form, where's Todd? We're, uh, I, need to uh, well, I want to ask you, please, that we're, out, we're past that section. Yeah, I know we have. If we need more discussion on it later, but right now I want to stay focused on what we're doing. Right. We're all not trying to shut you down. Friend, I, I, no, I, I, I want to just look the answer. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think well, what Todd said was that it was included because he just included the whole included the whole section that was being changed, but that section wasn't being that piece of it wasn't being. There was changed. no changes oh, done on that yeah. section. What? Okay. 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 Thank, you. Thank you, Ron. Okay, so the number four, we're not going to. Oh, she's got it. Thank oh, you very much. Is that it? Oh. Tina, thank you. Oh. Wow, oh, Tina. Right. Tina. <laughs> Tina's a hero. <laughs> Good job. For those that are aware of the room, otherwise, uh, our my, uh, administrative assistant, Tina, was last day. She's moved on to a new position elsewhere, so uh, we have spent much time in meetings to uh, give the out the responsibilities and duties and ensure the files were accessible. I'm not that guy. Right. I don't find the file, but I have great people to support me in doing that. Thank you, Tina, for that. Jamie. I just want, before this gets all the way around, I thought there was going to be a motion. And then we, have, we haven't so, done yeah. it yet. So, They're signing it pre Okay, pre so majority. I just want to bring something up. Um, you know, what, what you have there is basically what Waterbury chose to go with, mm -hmm. uh, which was their, you know, their version of what uh, is the draft version from the actual folks that are, are running this whole uh, uh, declaration of inclusion, um, and in the in the in the draft version that you would find on the website put forth by the people whose movement this is, um, the second paragraph states: As a town, we formally condemn all discrimination in all of its forms, commitment to fair and equal treatment of everyone in our community, and that's pretty much where it stops. But the actual draft statement continues to say, and will strive to ensure all our actions, policies, and operating procedures reflect this commitment. And right. I'd like to request that that sentence continue on what we're signing, and you're, you're signing there, continue on and include, and will strive to ensure all our actions, policies, and operating procedures reflect this commitment. It's just the way it, this one says Morristown has and will continue to be a place where individuals can live freely and express their opinion. And I and what I'm saying, I think that the sentence that's being left out. Um, it's is, not left out. This is instead of that sentence. No, Jamie's saying add in this. I'm saying sentence. add in and will. That's kind of ambiguous. So if you read that, it's the same thing as what he's saying, just no, in different words. Well, no, I think what Jamie's saying is it's like uh, maybe a further commitment by the town. 
What I'm to saying is like, this, what you have there is what Waterbury has presented. Right. And what they did was they worked off of this, mm -hmm. which is the very initial draft version mm -hmm. that's been put forth by the folks who are overseeing and came up with this. Right. And I'm at, and they, Waterbury, chose to omit this sentence. And mm -hmm. what I'm asking is that sentence be put back in to what we're doing, because I can't see any reason why we wouldn't include that. I like this as it is. I think that's Can you fine. tell me why you wouldn't want to include that, though? Because I think it says the same thing. This says the same it thing. Says, Morrison well, has and will all right, continue. All right, all right, all right. Well, that's I, my opinion. Jamie, can I see it? Because this is we, we we're all here to discuss it. Yeah. I think. yeah. Um. So. Unbelievable. So. I know this can be a really difficult um, discussion. I feel like because of a lot of things. Um. You know, it can be hard to talk about bias and it can be hard to talk about it in a way that's not heated. Um, but I think from what I'm understanding is what Jamie's asking for is um, a specific, this specific line, we, we will, and um, our community will strive to ensure all our actions, policies, and operating procedure, procedures reflect this commitment. It's a little bit of a deeper commitment. It's a little bit more of like looking at um, how our departments operate, um, it's not necessarily saying we have to do it now. It's not saying that, um, it's not putting a timeline on it, but it is, um, it is saying we're committed to um, looking at all of our town departments. And um, I, I think that I, I'm in favor of that. Um, I, I think it is, um, you know, instead of just being a declaration, it's, it's an actionable item. Um, but that's up for discussion, obviously. How does it work if the board already took a vote on the, because I think there's, I wasn't here, but the board, you took a vote on this last No, we didn't. No, we, didn't. Don't think we, we just did. Discuss, we just discussed it. We liked the way this okay. said so there was in these words. Right. We kind of took we, a vote. We all decided last week. Were you here last week? I was. OK. So that was in front of us last week, the one Waterbury put there. That's correct. Didn't have that. We sat right here waiting to bring it up then. Now we've because got I it all. Had, I hadn't reviewed the two with that. Okay. Point. And so, so I had we all to decided last right week to bring it up. We thought it was great and we're ready That's to presented. sign it. We've actually changed it and put one other word in now. Now we want to change it a little bit further. I know that there's going to be some um, documents coming out to, to provide us with a template on how to imp sort of implement this with our boards and, uh, and so we can be using that to supplement the um, statement that Jamie's interested in us. Uh, Into the template. Yeah, it, it, it's a way of you taking the language and using it instead of it just being a document that we're right. signing. It's how are we going to then implement this information or right. this, this statement, this mission. I mean, I see what you're saying, Jamie. I, I do. I'm kind of thinking, one of my comments last week, well, I made two comments last week. Number one, I, I like the simplicity of this. But I also like the idea that we could probably go back and amend this at any time in the future. It seems, it seems easy enough to add this. My specific comment was to get something out there and get a reaction. We're getting a reaction right now. And... We need to perhaps get a reaction from other parts of the community. I hate to think that those 50, 60, 70 words that we've, we agreed last or two weeks ago were pretty good, that they're perfect. I doubt they are perfect. Um, I, I, I'd like to take a little bit. I, I put some time into thinking about this, and I, I'm, I'm pretty happy with what I Don't think we're time. about to sign. Maybe not, but... But I'm not saying no to this. I don't see anything wrong with it, as you said. I just need to think about it. And I think it, it would be easy enough to add this sentence in in two weeks or four weeks. And, and maybe, maybe it belongs in there. And it won't have to be in this document. You can add that, that wording when we're working with it, like you said. So I'm not. I think we're all walking. It's just it seems like we're 
redoing and redoing. We do it one week, and the next week we're in here we're changing. Yeah, because one person says something, we're gonna add, add a whole thing. You know, well, so, I mean, to, to Jamie's point, the original. So I'm on the Vermont League, League of Cities and Towns. Um, I mean, so last week we were given like four or five choices, right? And one, one was a very long one, right? Um, from LCPC um, that we decided not to go with. This was the most concise one, and um, so I'm on the Vermont League of Cities and Towns, and Jamie's right, I hadn't realized it, that Waterberries is is what the Vermont League of Cities and Towns is putting forth as the recommendation, um, except for that one line, so. Mm -hmm. So you're saying yeah. League, of, League of Cities and Towns has taken that? Yes, yeah, this is what they're recommending. So, uh, just in terms they're, of where, not, where is it coming from? They're not recommending this whole thing. Right. They are. Yes, they are recommending. They are recommending what Jamie is putting forth the, with the, this additional, um, this additional sentence. Well, like I said, like Don said, we can amend it any time. I'm happy with this. I think we all agreed this is the one we like the most. And that's what I'm happy with. I think when we come, when we, we can take, add to it, take we a step it. forward that we're how to implement this, then we, mm -hmm. we're adding that statement to show that there's more than just a statement being made, then there's action to it. Right. At least we get something out there. Or we just table it for tonight and bring it up again in two weeks. You can do that. You can withdraw the motion if you'd like. We haven't made a motion yet. Motion. So I guess I'd like to just read the, like the, um, the temperature or whatever in the room. Like if if we, if we adopt this now, um, and we move forward, um, that's one option. Or do you feel like if you had time to look more closely and think more about it, you might be open to adding a sentence? Or do you feel like that's just prolonged? I see no, read that, no, no reason to add that sentence with okay. this the way it is. Okay. I think it's fine the way it is. Okay. We all agree on feel, it. Do you feel like there's a reason to not include it? Like, it, do you feel like it. it's like too much of a commitment? Like no, it's just going like it doesn't need it. Okay. This is perfect the way it is, I thought. And your change with equitable is, is great. Okay. I read this a lot too. I spent a lot of time thinking about it. Yeah. And looking at yeah. all the ones right. you, you gave right. every, you right. know, we had yeah. a list of everything. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I'm happy with it. May I keep this? Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I would be, I would be like of the mind to, to go ahead and approve this. Um, <laughs> with a new. Let's make a motion and do it. Unless it's an or onerous task to. Um, amend it in the future. We just simply make it an agenda item and need to take that action. Okay. I guess my feeling about it is we're a town right now that doesn't have a statement of inclusion. Right. Yeah, and we should have. Yeah. And to have a statement of inclusion is important to me. Yeah, me too. And I think it's important to a lot of other people in town. And I think we've got something that we agreed on. I agree. Uh, two weeks ago, and I guess I'd, I guess I'd just like to move forward with what we already spent a lot of time on. Mm -hmm. so, I'd, so, yeah. so I'd make it a motion that we adopt the declaration of inclusion as presented in front of us. Do you want me to read it? Um, with the is that with the addition of equitable? That yeah. Morris, Morristown okay. condemns racism and welcomes all people, regardless of race, color, religion, national origin, sex, gender identity, or expression, age, or disability, and will protect these classes to the fullest extent of the law. As a town, we formally condemn discrimination in all of its forms and commit to the fair and equitable treatment of everyone in our community. Morristown has and will continue to be a place where individuals can live freely and express their opinion. I'll second it. All right, I have a motion by Don and a second by Brian. Is there any further discussion on it? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion is passed unanimously. Okay. Do you want that? Do you 
want this brought back on the next two meetings agenda to discuss an amendment to that statement. Some time to look at it more. I'm, I'm happy with that the way it is. Um. It's fine with me. I think it would be a pretty quick, well, I'd hope it would be a pretty quick discussion. I doubt it. Put on the next, I can put on the next agenda. Okay. All right, next, re review and approve purchase of the 2022 Volvo wheel loader. Thank you. Hi. Hey, Kevin. Kevin here, Superintendent. He's going to speak to your, uh, the process that you went through for applying for bids. So back in the uh, fall, I went out for request for bids on with five manufacturers of loaders. At that point was when I came back to you guys in my budget and asked for a place mark of $185,000 for the purchase of a new loader, which was put in my budget and we moved forward. So in now doing so, I went with back to all five of those again and asked for a true budget or quote because if we were outside the six month window and as we know with COVID and everything else they requested that they couldn't become they couldn't give me a firm quote that far away but once we got into a six month window they would give me a firm quote so I went back to the all five of them again two of them did not reply and you have the other three in front of you. And we might get this one, this one, this one, this one, this back and forth for a little bit. Yeah. Summarize what Kevin just explains. Let's let me get a pre bid request manufacturers of our orders for budgeting purposes. They didn't want to take, they, they weren't going to be held accountable for the dollar figure at that time. It was outside the six month window, in which they would normally give us a solid dollar figure on the end. But they gave us a ballpark so that we kind of have a good idea of the budget for our market order. He has gone back out all five of those. Uh, companies as well, and ask them now we're inside the six month window and the budget's been approved. Ask them for an actual bid price uh, for uh, their, their both their market order. That's where we stop. Okay. And at this point, three of the five return flows in their in your package. Thank you, Kevin. Do you have a preference for the brand? I mean, to me, it seems like the seven-year warranty is a no-brainer. Um, it's not, it's hits right in the middle of the road in terms of cost. Right. Um, do you think that Volvo is a good choice or do you have a preference? Um, well, we have, right now we have a Volvo loader, we have a case loader, we have a Honda loader. Mm -hmm. And the, this loader will be replacing the Volvo loader that we already use and it's mm -hmm. the oldest one in the fleet. Mm -hmm. We've had very good Over the course of its life, it hasn't caused a lot of problems for the town. It hasn't had a lot of a large maintenance bills. Um, what maintenance it does need, the company is only an hour away. Um, TRW is over in Wollaston. So everything that we've done with that loader, it's been very, very quick, very, very good turnaround. We, have, we know we have the Volvo Grader as well. They come in and they take care of us very well. Yeah, I have some feedback too. I went and met with the highway guys, mm -hmm. and they they all love the the Volvo. Mm -hmm. um, I, I I asked also because uh, I always believe in supporting the local guy, and of course Pete's Equipment is uh, a Hyundai dealer, mm -hmm. and the Hyundai loader we have, none of the guys like it. They yeah. they don't like it for a number of reasons, and um, I actually drove that loader as well, and that has. Has issues, it has visibility issues and some other issues. It had some steering issues for a while, and you know that's figured out now. But I'm I'm always supposed to look, support the local guy like Brian is too, and mm -hmm. 
Um, in this case, after having talked to all the highway guys, I agree that uh, the Volvo is the best choice for Morristown. I mean, the Doosan is close in price range, but they're two and a half hours away. And it's just, that to me, is just too far away to have to transport a loader if something happens to it and breaks down. And the problem with the case was they couldn't give us a, a locking differential at this time. And with what we do here in the village and moving the snow, the locking differential is a must on this machine. And the case is a little, it's a little more expensive. The ball actually does come in with the, if you went apples to apples in five years across the board, the, the Volvo is a cheaper order, is the least expensive. But they offer that seven year warranty and the other two didn't. Definitely want to go for the longest warranty we can get yeah. for the money. Yeah. So your recommendation is the Volvo? Yes. Yeah, your preference is the Volvo. And there's what, is there a, not even a $6,000 difference between them? Uh, the, the three bids are really, really close. Yeah. Anthony, you gotta... What's the reason why the town won't lease this equipment? That's a good question. We've, had, we've thought about doing that before, but I don't know. Brian, well, do you it's remember? It's not running now, right? There's two graders and ain't running right now. No, the Volvo, is, the Volvo grader is running. We're talking yeah. about a bucket load. Yeah. I understand that. But I was told there was two graders that were down. It seemed was, to me... It, it seemed, was down. It would seem to me like if you leased them, and the lease company would step in there and give us another one, right? So we could use it. If it's available. If, if it's available. available. Right. right. If okay. it's available. And if it's covered under the lease, some things aren't covered under a lease. Well, I think the town could probably make. We could try. We could try. So but better than a seven year warranty. So, Kevin, what is your experience with leased equipment? Zero. The only one that I know of that does that is CAT. And CAT's too expensive. Right. There are fuel hogs. They're just not inefficient. We no, we don't know if we could get lease a Volvo. I don't know that. Yeah. In terms of fuel, this is a reasonable machine? Yes. Yep. We have a Volvo less grader and a Volvo grader. They both are below average in fuel use. So they're, they're better. You mean they're not going to make that electric too? Uh, they do have a hybrid <laughs> Someday. Someday so we will have them. Someday. Yeah. Long cord. Yeah, Long cord. Yeah. <laughs> I said I'd like to see an electric car here at Cody Hill. They aren't going to make it. Okay. Yeah, we need a motion. If you would like. And you said there was a hundred and eighty five in the budget for this? Yeah. Yeah. That we've already earmarked. There's hundred and eighty six thousand in it. This quote is actually seventeen thousand one hundred less than you have budgeted. Yeah. That's good. So I move that we approve the purchase of the 2022 Volvo L60H wheel loader from Woods CRW for a total purchase price of 168.9. This includes a seven year warranty. $50,000 will be utilized from the Highway Capital Equipment Fund and financing the balance for five years. I have a motion by Don, do I have a second? Second. Second by Brian. Is there any further discussion on this? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed unanimously. Next, amend original truck purchase motion of 2022 international dump truck. What's the deal with that? As a result of the company's calling, uh, it's the feedback that they're getting from the Volvo Price increase, right? Surcharge. Surcharge, sorry, thanks. The word was escaping me. Uh, it, it is based on the supply. Supplying the companies, uh, the company itself, not the one we're buying from the manufacturer. The manufacturer so, itself. A surcharge, oh. which throws off our financing approval that you both did for the purchase of this truck. 
because the dollar amounts don't anymore. That way, front, the dollar amounts don't match. So we, we're amending your motion, your original motion, and uh, we have a new motion right here. How much is the difference? $3,500. Hmm. They are telling us okay. that in 2023, they will not be able to guarantee us a price on the truck. Supply and demand, the chain is broken to the point where they will, I'm not sure, we'll have to address it at that time, but I don't care how it did mm -hmm. works when you're not going to get a price problem until the price goes into the service. Oh. It's only going to get worse. It's, it's a everything. different way of looking at things. The first part of this, Don, reads in the first sentence is what the old motion was. And the second part deals with the amended motion. Ready? Go ahead. I move that we amend the motion of the purchase of the 2022 international dump truck from Clark's for a total price of 97535 to be. I move to approve the purchase of the 2023 international dump truck from Allegiance for $101. $1,037. This includes a seven year warranty. $50,000 will be utilized from the Highway Capital Equipment Fund and financing the balance for five years. I have a motion by Don. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Brian. Is there any further discussion on this? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Next, accept the resignation of administrative assistant. Have any and comments she did about not that? Include her resignation. <laughs> Nuts. <laughs> but we're not going to accept it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry, Sarah. Yes. Sarah gave us her own easy as you know, and uh, his favorite was the last day in the office. And she was uh, a good lady. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. 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 That area of our office. Thank structure. you for coming. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And Sheila. Um, and uh, going forward, whichever is selected to back door and slot has a nicely structured, organized office area and file system. Very easy to read, very easy to get through. Um, it will just make the transition that much easier. Sarah's taking the time to write down some processes and uh, and for the incoming person who that that may be. So she uh, she certainly left in a very professional manner in the same manner she, she served us with. That's great. Are you at liberty to share where she went to? Uh, but for the time being, she's going to be working for her check auctions, but it's a reduced amount of hours. Uh, they will balance things out uh, for her priority being family and ours is. Uh, she needed to have more flexibility with schedule than this position would allow for. We, we looked at it to try and make things work. It just, and she would say, it's a 40 plus hour week job. And uh, it just, her, her children needed more goals. Good reason. Have you, yes. Do you have any applicants? applicants? Yes, we do. We do have some. Judy and the ad just went out in the paper for this past week. So you should see it in the news and citizen. Yes, uh, um, I'm wondering if this, I don't know if this belongs in this discussion, um, but I'm wondering, and it sounds like it's too, probably too late, but um, if it'd be possible to hire someone with grant writing um, capabilities as that's um, been identified as a you know, place that um, we could improve for. So we, had we, did <laughs> we did put a job description. Yeah. Yeah. So, do you need a motion to accept a resignation? Yes, please. Make a motion we accept Sarah Hyde's resignation with regrets. A second. I have a motion by Judy and a second by Brian. With a thank you. Is there any further discussion? I just want to say I I didn't work with Sarah for very long, but she was. You're right, a true pleasure to work with. Mm -hmm. It hurts. <laughs> yeah. 
Is there um, a letter of thank you that's been being prepared or will be prepared? Uh, I can get that prepared and have it ready for your signature. We'll just let you know when it's here. That'd be great. So I'm uh, sure you'd really appreciate that. She thank you. received many thanks here from the office today. Um, Terry and Sabins are uh, from the Blister's office. Right in the um, donut says she drives by the former Yamas covering Jeffersonville on her way to work. Yeah. And brought us a whole box and then handed out the cards with which that if you wrote Sarah a very nice note, that you could have a donut. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> anyway, I don't think the donuts are necessary. People are, are uh, very, very uh, good about sending her away. We, we've been going for a while. Yeah. Plus, most of her chops, too. We've been told, you know, typically the bad weather all hits on that side of town. So. Right. <laughs> yeah, I chatted with her too, but that'd be great to have something. All right. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. We are at. Uh, next, number eight, appoint agent to convey real estate for all eight cemeteries. So we're going to break it up just a little bit. So I've had conversations with uh, Joy Marshall and with Donna Smith um, as they are both members of their own associations. Uh, Joy has agreed to uh, continue to serve as the agent for Bay Real Estate for Pleasant View Cemetery. Okay. And then Dennis has agreed to continue in that same role for the other seven cemeteries of the Marshall Cemetery Association. Mm -hmm. I just need to appoint them. Okay. I make a motion that we appoint the two. Okay. I have a motion by Brian. Second. Second by Judy. Is there any further discussion? Does this solve any problems? No. Formalizes okay. it. It's an annual thing like your town. Oh, okay. Um, they, have to, they sign off on the deeds. Is that right? Yeah. All the deeds are created. It's mostly a housekeeping issue. <laughs> So I guess we don't need to have Jess here for the vote, but. I assume you're looking to fill Sarah's position pretty quickly. We are. We are. We are. In the newspaper this week and next week, um, we have a couple, we put it out originally, local sources, Indie, Ground, um, and then the Forum Forum and Facebook Forum. Um, we wanted to make sure we were hitting a large enough group so we set out, we figured out a couple of pretty good uh, resumes that have shown up to Indeed. Uh, most of them relatively local, but we wanted to go the newspaper route, get the word out even further, uh, make sure we have a, a great pool of social okay. <laughs> Eric pointed Quiet. out this, this is mostly just a housekeeping issue. This, yes, this yes. vote here. Yep. So, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Next, TA report, Eric. Oh, no, sorry, approved warrants. I missed that. So, motion to approve. Motion by Brian, second by Judy. Um, any further discussion on them? It was a good explanation last meeting about the, what the warrants were. Just we weren't having thing. Garth chase anybody. Or like that. <laughs> Did you tell her what she voted I on? I yeah, know. She knew. I, she because knew. we're on number we were on number eight. Yeah, <laughs> we were. You know who they are? Joy Marshall for Pleasant View and Smith for the other seven Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All in favor, say aye to approve aye. the warrants. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Now, TA report. Uh, I want to give you a library update. So, as you know, from our previous meeting, the library has received a new order. They were getting orders of propane inside the building. This went on uh, for a few days prior to my being notified that it was a current uh, staff that they were trying to handle themselves. And, um, when it came to my attention, it, there was a lot of miscommunication going on again. And there was uh, technicians 
that were talking to staff up there, and then there was a field supervisor speaking to the staff, and so I jumped in the middle of this and asked for some clarification because their the reasoning wasn't clear to me as to why there was propane smells in the building. There was some, uh, not, I would say assumptions or guesswork, but they were trying to find out um, where there might be some propane coming out of the system. So originally when they put it in, it was a natural gas fire furnace, and we don't have natural gas. It's an orifice. Yeah, propane. So they contacted the uh, fuel rep for the manufacturer, and they said, you need a software, change the software. They called it a software update to me, which threw me off because to me, software update means you got updated software, but really it was a software change. It was had to do with combustion rate. So uh, natural gas being a much cleaner fuel, uh, the combustion happens very quickly. Propane is not as clean a fuel, and it was having a delay in the ignition. So some propane was escaping during that process, not enough to cause explosions, but it certainly caused the odor because the air exchange system is in the same room with the furnace. You're going to do it at your house. It's not a great idea. So time went on. They changed the software. Back to cure the ignition issue. Uh, they continued to have smells. So they shot off the air exchange because the theory was they were going to be pulling exhaust from the furnace through the air intake of the air exchange system. So they turned off the air exchange system, the smell went away, uh, they went a few days without any odor. The odor showed up on a Friday, last Friday. And there's some confusion as to when the air exchange system was plugged in. I was told by staff that it, they didn't turn it on, but when I went there today, they said no, it was on when they got there, the, the uh, Fred's uh, technician. He said it was plugged in and running, so it caused confusion there. End result, I had a, a conversation, very funny conversation with the service rep here at Friends. They reached out to the manufacturer and they sent a field uh, rep down from uh, Maine uh, today. I met with he and the FW Web distributor representative, uh, which out of Barry, as well as uh, Mike Wells from Friends, who's the service um, supervisor and the technician has been working most recently on the front. So they went through an hour and a half worth of uh, checks, uh, had their equipment set up, looking for any indication of any kind of leak anywhere. And I understand Fred's has also made some changes to the hardware, not to the boiler, but to the system itself, in that <coughs> they, were, they didn't install the original system, they installed the boiler. So they were, Everything else that was there was installed by someone else. And there was a pipe uh, there, a PVC pipe, and uh, exhaust pipe. Uh, that wasn't quite long enough between the two elbows, and it popped out of the collar. So they cut a new piece of pipe, put it back in there. Now it won't, it's not able to pop out. They sealed up some uh, places on the air exchange system where the internal workings of the boiler uh, depend upon uh, no draft in that room. And the air exchange system, the pulling air, creates draft. So they worked to minimize that such that there wasn't uh, the computer in the boiler uh, would, would adjust itself for any kind of a change in the, let's say, vacuum in the room. They, they, were, they were testing all possibilities and uh, looking at how this furnace could be possibly emitting any kind of a propane order. Does that have a, is that, is there a power venter on that unit or does it just vent into a flue? Because that can cause a problem too. I, I say that because I had that in my house. Yeah. Same kind of thing. So I won't get into the technical stuff on it because I'm not qualified to talk about yeah. it. Right. I will tell you while we were there, this, the furnace itself cycled probably a dozen times. I couldn't tell you because you couldn't hear it. The combustion is fine. The, the, the functions properly, you can't even hear it clicking on. Um, it, it, there were no smells. We were standing in a, the door closed in a very small room with four large men. And you, no, at no time that I detect any odor of propane. 
coming from that unit. Uh, it, they, they tested the unit for its function. It's working perfectly. Uh, I have no qualms whatsoever that whatever the, the case was or problem was where they were getting some escaped propane that would send the smell to the system and out into the, into the library. It was only in one portion of the library that it was being smelled. It was in the, in the basement area for the, the children's area there. I'd say children's area, the whole library, the children's area, but there's a specific area in the basement. Is there a CO detector down there? They, they had, uh, they have all the detectors. They've actually mounted one themselves. Uh, Fred's has, that is a combustible, uh, combustible gas detector. So it doesn't matter if it's propane or any, right. somebody put a paint, can paint there and it's gonna start off the alarm. So uh, they have that plugged in now as an added safety measure, but they found absolutely nothing wrong with the boiler. Uh, it tested out perfectly and run the functioning fine. So more to come or we'll we, see. We plugged in the, uh, the air exchange and brought um, uh, the library coordinator, Kendra. Kendra, thank you, down and had her in the room. We showed her what was going on and what the testing had done. We'd gone through just built her confidence. There was a confidence shaking conversation that occurred last Thursday night. And uh, so this was a great way for them to bring that confidence level back with the staff there and with me. Uh, I think everybody in that room had some level of liability involved in this, mm -hmm. and everybody there was taken very seriously. So good. Uh, I think the, the problem, whatever it was, nobody can really say where this little leak of propane was coming from exactly. But they've seemed to have uh, mastered it for now. We'll see. If it comes back, they will again, they will continue to look at it. Okay. I know this might be totally unrelated, but I know when my husband's doing painting or doing it, varnishing or anything in the cellar, and there's no smell. But when I turn my stove, my gas stove on, it smells like propane in the house. Mm -hmm. We had someone come in and say, because the fumes are in the air and you fire up the furnace, then that, not furnace, but the, the rain, the smells become noticeable. Uh, I don't know if they're doing arts and crafts down there with the kids, and if there's if that smells mixing with it, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not an expert, but yeah, we'll see. Or maybe it's coming in from the outside. So the communication with friends has been very, very good. Uh, okay. So they're on it. Anyway. They're, they're there, and I have the, the field supervisor's phone number. And okay. Must be that. Okay. Uh, I'd like for Kevin to take. A couple minutes of my time to speak to you folks on the class three roads update to describe to you what they've been through since last, <coughs> last week. That's great. And uh, I wanted to do this simply because there have been a variety of different pieces of information that have come back to me from the public that uh, aren't quite factual. And I wanted to go on record and have it stated here tonight so you folks are all aware of what they've been through for the last few days. Yeah, and I also have gotten lots of phone calls the past week, and it's great to have you speak about it. I drove around the roads today, a lot of the roads, and they're a lot better than what I was told they were. And I know in large part that's because of what you and your men have been doing. So it's great to have you give a report. Well, first of all, I'd like to thank all of you for all the calls that I'm sure you feel have filled in over the last few days uh, about the mud and the road conditions. Um, the temperatures were awesome. I love 60 degree temperatures like everybody else. They just hit too fast, too hard, too long. Um, about Thursday at noon time is when everything started to break up in earnest. By Monday, uh, Friday morning, we had made it, uh, by the end of the day, we had made a plan to be back in Friday at 3 a.m. to really hit all of the bad spots. And one of the worst ones was the wall road, um, as well as the Grand Loop, but we'll get to that one. Um, so we spent from 3 a.m. on Monday, Friday morning until almost 4 p.m. Friday afternoon on just the Walton Road with a grader and six trucks, six hands hand hauling stuff. In conjunction with working with loaders on other roads at the same time and more trucks. So Friday morning I got a little air and said, you know, we're just overwhelmed. I need more trucks. I could use more graders, but I need more trucks. Um, got to go ahead, hired on seven more trucks, three MSI, 
Brown trucks, a couple of Percy's trucks, Fred BN's trucks out of Hardwood. They hauled for us all day. Saturday morning, when we left here, Friday night, about 7.30. Saturday morning, came back in early, put in another eight hours. We've actually deplenished all of Percy's stone from two inch down. Three quarter inch, inch to quarter inch, inch and a half, two inch stone, they have more. Today we started hauling out of Nadu's pit, inch and a quarter. The problem with their stone is it's not fractured, it's round. It doesn't pack as well. So we made the call to Nick, asked him about his stone. He has fractured inch and a quarter. We made one trip down there. Before we got there from the second trip, got a phone call. They sold the whole pile to another town. So we, and right now, I don't know how much more NATO has at their location, but with all of us, there was Essex, Cambridge, I mean, multiple towns hauling out of NATO today. And they had between three and 4,000 tons of material there. When we started, it was a pretty decent pile. This afternoon, there wasn't a whole lot left. So we've pretty much depleted everybody's stone source in the area to, make, to bring our roads to where they're at right now. And all the roads are passable right now, right? All the roads right now, emergency vehicle can get through without issues. But that's the standard I set for Kevin. I said, we are going to make these roads passable for me from the right car that there is out there. But we need to be able to assure our residents that we can get emergency vehicles to their house, police, fire, and rescue. We have four wheel drive, all, all services have four wheel drive vehicles. I wanted the roads to at least a condition where they could get through if need be. And we achieved that. We, meaning the highway department, achieved that. And uh, there were a lot of community partners that assisted in us. It was a huge joint effort. And uh, their efforts uh, were described by one email as nothing shy of heroic. They, uh, they have done a phenomenal job of getting the roads where they were today worked in our favor because there was the high wind along with the sunshine and it created a drying effect that was advantageous. Mm -hmm. Added to that tonight, our temperatures will be below freezing. We're gonna firm up the roads. And uh, same thing tomorrow night, same temperature uh, drop tomorrow night. So we continue wind and the cold temperatures at night. We're hoping that there's gonna be a real good drying effect on this. Continue to work with graders. Uh, we rented a grader today it turned out to be too small for the work we were needing it to do, so we let it go by one o'clock. We've inquired about another grader locally. We're trying to stay away from leasing from uh, one of the manufacturers uh, simply because of the cost. It's cost per day. It's fourteen thousand dollars you have to run by the month. So um, we're in touch with John Deere, keeping track of how they're coming on the progress on our John Deere local uh, grader. And I can update that. I got another call later this afternoon. Uh, the they're 90% sure they've figured out what the oil leak is and have not did not have to split the machine down to repair. That's good. Um, so they've got to put in the idler tensioner wheel on the serpentine belt for the motor that froze on Thursday. Once that's done, they can run the machine in earnest tomorrow. And hopefully by midday tomorrow, we'll know whether or not the machine will hop back by Wednesday. Okay. That's pretty good. Yeah, Kevin was great. I, I was getting lots of calls, like I said, and there's one gentleman who he, he manages like 50 different places on the Upper Mountain Road. He called me about a dozen times, and I called him back. I was out of state. I was unavailable. And as soon as I got the call from him, I called Kevin or text Kevin, and he got right on it because the guy called me back the next morning and said, thank you. You know, you made it so I could get through, and he was super appreciative. <laughs> And it just, just shows how, how great our highway department is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're still taking some slack for the rough roads and the big potholes, but and at least they're hard. They're not, you're not getting swallowed into the mud. Mm -hmm. But those will, those will be repaired here shortly. Yeah, anything that comes in on our website or anything that comes in through email, it immediately gets forward to Kevin for his knowledge. And uh, he has responded fantastic and his guys have responded fantastic to get those problem areas and give them some attention. They aren't perfect. Uh, they become passable, but uh, you know, it's people still have lives. They're going to, they need to get in and out. 
choose up what we fixed, we go back and fix it again. And uh, that's, that's repeated itself a couple of times already, but we're going to keep after it. A big thank you, Kevin, and to all the guys. Yeah. That's great. I'll be, I'll be bringing donuts again on Friday morning. <laughs> there you go. Is it, you have a suggestion about those of us who don't live on the dirt roads, how long we should stay off them? I give at least June, July. <laughs> 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 okay. Yeah. Weather reports favorable for us for the rest of the week. We've seen a lot of moisture in the air, seeing some wind and sun, and that, yeah. that helps us. And the rain, actually, you're supposed to get a couple of days of rain, that'll help bring the frost out, too. Yeah. Mm. The temperature is getting cooler, and it'll slow down the immediate fast melt of the frost. Okay. okay. Thank you. I'd like to add, I don't know if Eric wrote it or Sarah wrote it or Kevin wrote it, but um, whoever wrote the, the press release, the press release, it was I've great. gotten um, a lot of positive feedback and thank you um, for getting that word out ahead of time. It was well written. It was. Mm -hmm. well, I had a lot of positive people tell me things about it. One of the things is when you didn't have the grader, there was one guy telling me he needs in equipment. He said, boy, that guy in that bucket loader could do almost as good as grading. Mm. So it's, it's a, lot of, a lot of good stuff. I'm sure there's a lot that had trouble, but thank you. All right. Thank you. And the guys. Yeah. Uh, I mean, last the rest of these, so I had a meeting last week, uh, the construction project coordination with Neely and Chase, as well as the Mall County Conservation District. And the project they have scheduled for the municipal parking lot um, based on vehicles and uh, contractors at the Union Chase, the Village Center Apartments con uh, project, where they have vehicles and trailers parked and uh, is right on top of where this filtration system is going to go in. So I wanted to get them together to talk timeline uh, and, and how we're going to address that. So it worked out to be advantageous to the contractor that's going to do the filtration system, gravel construction. Dan Gravel is here, and he's uh, inquired about the uh, cement products, concrete, the preform stuff that he's going to have to have, and the timeline for receiving that is early August. Need and Chase said uh, they're going to be reducing their contractors by mid July, working to have the building in September. So. Timeline-wise, that's been pushed out. The filtration project has been pushed out to later in the summer um, from the spring, and it actually worked out very well for everybody involved. Uh, we then were dealing with cemetery issues, uh, working uh, with Sarah and Dennis, and working to get a, a system in place that is uh, more streamlined and easier to follow. Um, Mark Faith has retired. Um, and so there's no longer uh, practicing as a funeral director. It happened very, very quickly and suddenly. He gave uh, uh, personal health reasons um, as his reasoning for doing so. There is another funeral home that he is in negotiations with right now, um, and he hopes to, to have that deal uh, completed soon. But Mark had been acting as sexton for Pleasant Beach Cemetery, so we're looking to fill those duties. Uh, to figure out the best way to do that. So spring tournaments are around the corner. Dennis continues to sell lots in uh, the seven cemeteries of the association. Um, but we need someone to do some of that work in the Pleasant View. So still working on that. Your paving projects. Kevin spent some time with one of the contractors that's looking to put in a bid for the paving. And they have looked at the three roads. Each of them is plus or minus mile and a quarter in length. Randolph Road and Stagecoach Road, neither one of them have any significant grade issues. So their tonnage uh, estimates are roughly the same for those two roads. And then the tonnage estimate for Garfield Road is, is higher because we have that steep incline portion that's going to require a thicker layer of pavement on that area. We paid $85 a ton for our hot mix last year. This contractor says it's going to go north of $120 a ton this year, and they won't guarantee the price. So, we are having a meeting tomorrow, myself, Kevin, and his two guys, and we're going to sit down and discuss strategy. 
because the money we currently have available for paving is not sufficient to buy the time we need to complete all three roads. And we will come up with a plan to address that. Uh, we may, I won't guess if our end result of the meeting will be, but uh, we have many options we can discuss. Uh, I have had a conversation with Ryan Harry at the uh, Lamont South Unified Union, and he is going to send out a meeting invite tomorrow to uh, Penny Jones, myself, and all the players to have a, a conversation about the capital projects that was released here okay. last meeting. So uh, we'll have that to discuss later, uh, probably the next our next board meeting. Uh, I spoke with Jim Marlowe today in reference, uh, I called him midday, he called me back late this afternoon in reference to the question about how we do the appointments, um, the planning and um, planning council and the area. And specific to those two, the, um, what he uh, gave to me was that the DRB can only be an appointed position. However, a resolution board can bring forth a resolution to limit the number of terms that a person can serve consecutively on that board. Planning council can be brought to the voters with a request to make those positions elected versus appointed. But it would take us going to town meeting bringing the article forth, the voters approving it would take another year before that election process would take place. So those are the responses I got on the, the planning and DRB. Um, sorry, so, so you're saying for the appointed boards, um, we can, each, each individual board can set term limits or the select board can- Planning set. council. If you go on elected format, you cannot set term limits. But if you stay with the appointment model, then you can do it through resolution on the DRB. You can do a resolution that you can limit the number of terms that someone can serve on the DRB. Okay. And what about select board or village uh, chief? I didn't go beyond that. The, okay. the conversation last meeting was about uh, specifically okay. planning and DRB. So it would be up to the DRB to. Um, initiate that resolution? It, uh, the select board. What's that? The select board. Would initiate that? Yes. Okay. Joint with the trustees? Joint with the trustees. Yeah, yeah I was going to say that. Yeah. So both of these boards have to be joint, any member of those has to be jointly approved by the trustees and by the select board. So uh, you'd have to have a mutual um, standing with the trustees as well to go through mm -hmm. the same thing. Uh -huh. You could have heard time. With so just, just, not to make, make up time, but thinking if you're thinking of changing anything, I don't know how it would work electing um, planning commission members because it's a separate town meeting and village meeting. Right. So just something. Another layer of take. confusion. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to. I know, I thought of the same thing. Mm -hmm. Both have to happen. What else you got? In my list. <laughs> the end of Is that it? Wait, are you? Yes. But you're saying that the planning council can be elected, but it needs to go in front of the town meeting to make in front of the oh, in yeah. front of the voters Sorry. at town meeting or through a ballot if we don't have in person. Brought in a petition, yes. Um, they would have to to change to an elected. Yeah. I'm, I'm jumping back and forth, and it's Sarah's day to work on the election piece here. The, it would be a floor vote uh -huh. because um, unless the article, the, the first time would be floor vote, and um, if you want it to be a ballot item, then the that would year. have to be a floor vote um, because we don't have a charter, everything state statute, so everything is a floor vote. Unless the voters vote at a floor vote to allow it to be on a strike ballot. Okay. The following year. The following year. Okay. Um, or unless someone came forward with a petition. No, because no. you don't do a petition for a floor vote. What if there's no town meeting? Well, then it would be whatever the COVID emergency legislation is of that time that changes every other week, depending on the legislature. <laughs> okay. Hmm. We're going to have town meeting next year. Yes, 
something positive. I hope so. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm tired of not meeting as big groups. And it wouldn't be if it's, uh, I don't know, I'm going to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. What else, Eric? Thank you, Eric. That's all I know. Any more questions for Eric? Can I ask you a question that's not related to your report? No. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, any applicants for a rec director? I turn back to my HR. Recreation coordinator, not as of yet. Um, um, are we, sorry. Do you know how long it's been out? It hasn't been out very long, Judy, so give it a little bit of time. Okay. Can I ask where it's being, um, Advertised. I just put the, the notice in the paper. There yes. was a misunderstanding. We uh -huh. thought had had already gone to the paper. It oh. had not. So okay, it was sure. placed in there today. Okay. Um, and Sarah has is placing it in other areas. This Sarah. Yeah, Sarah. there was a little of confusion thing. about right. Sarah's at one point. Um, and who was doing what? So it's going to be in the paper. It's been on Front Porch Forum. Mm -hmm. It's been on Facebook. It's on the town website. Um, I um, am working with the Vermont Recreation and Parks Association to get it on the Vermont website because we're a member of that. I'm trying to think because there's also the counselor ones, what has been to where. I've reached out for the counselor ones to... Um, the supervisory union, I've reached out to the high school guidance counselors, I've reached out to the colleges. Uh, there might be more. Got any more ideas? Would school spring be appropriate? Um, um, I don't know. It's sort of, it's sort of, um, it's yeah, kind I know of kid related. Spring. Yeah. But you, so you reached out like particularly to like schools that have um, outdoor rec. Um, I reached out to CCB yeah. and I reached out to Johnson. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um. Okay. Okay. Was that a select board concern? Must be it was, and you jumped ahead. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do select board concerns now. Don. Uh, I'll just start. I didn't say thank you, Kevin, before, but I'll say it now. Thank you very much. Roads up our way Thursday night were pretty bad. I hadn't seen them like that in well over 10 years. Going up Coal Hill was, was pretty miserable. And sitting around the uh, Patno Sugar House this past weekend, those boys are pretty appreciative of being able to move some sap around too. Um, so thank you very much. Most of what I want to talk about right now is just uh, people that I've talked to recently. And you know, I've spent a lot of time talking to Eric, taking, away his, taking his time away from all the things he has to do, and I appreciate that. Spent a lot of time talking to Todd. Went to the staff meeting a week and a half ago, and that was great, and uh, really appreciated that. It was, it was just fun to sit in here and see all the people that are working for the town. I mean, we must have spent over an hour just introducing ourselves, so that was, that was just, it was a lot of fun for me, and hopefully it was for others as well. I appreciated, uh, I appreciated you guys doing that for me. Spent some time talking to Mr. Lindemer about his cannabis business, and I know that's coming up in the future, and uh, that was just a, a, a fun conversation as well. And then lastly, I did not get a chance to meet with Jason last week. Uh, he had an emergency, but he did get back to me, and I'm going to sit down with him this week over at the police station. So, can Ben Garcia do anytime? Yep. I'll, I'll be there Thursday morning. All right. Great. Thanks, Don. Judy. I wanted to welcome Don to the board. It was able to do that last two weeks ago. And uh, I just also want to publicly thank Gary Nolan for his service on the select board. And uh, I appreciate his integrity and honesty. And um, while I worked with him, I found him to be a very delightful person to work with. And I just thank his service for our town. Thank you. I, I meant to say that last week. And thanks for bringing it up. Go ahead, Jess. Um, I um, don't have any big concerns this week. Um, I do know that an email went out about ma masks in the town offices. Um, I personally, um, I'm totally COVID experiencing COVID burnout like times 10 million, like everyone else. 
Um, but I just wanted to know what the uh, result of that email going out was. Um, and also maybe just to say, like, I, I personally feel like I might wear a mask in this room just because I, I you know, I work in this school. I have a young daughter. Um, it's the ventilation in here isn't, um, you know, state of the art, to put it mildly. Um, and I'm, I'm totally fine. I understand we're not at a great risk at this point. Um, I'm totally fine without a mask ma mandate. But I'm wondering if, um, you know, I just want to put it out there, you know, there may be a point in time again where we have another surge and that we reconsider the safety of our most vulnerable people um, and that we consider wearing masks again to protect those people. I know there's a lot of controversy around it and I'm not looking to get into um, a debate, especially at um, 8.45. Um, but I just want to put it out there that there may be a time in the future <clears throat> where um, you know the CDC right, um, guidelines may change, and that um, you know caseloads may be up, and that we want to protect people who are vulnerable. Appreciate that. We yeah. we have been following the, the Department of Health, Vermont Department of Health, not necessarily the CDC, but mm -hmm. Vermont Department of Health and our governor. Mm -hmm. As far as recommendations go, we've done that for months. Yeah, and, and I we follow that. his recommendation and their their uh, guidance as far as mask wearing. With the staff uh, will. If somebody comes in and asks us to put on that, we will absolutely put a mask on mm -hmm. uh, and wear all their gear. But that's, that's a personal choice at this point. I had a majority of the board that, that responded back and said they, they had no problem with us following, continue to follow with the department of health. And, and with that. Yeah, and I, I can echo that too because I spent a couple hours with the governor in Stowe and um, he, he it's all the same thing. Anybody can wear it by choice, but he feels like it's, you know, it's a, it's time we, we don't do it anymore. A lot of people say, well, that's a political thing, you know, but it's not at all for him, you know, and, and he understands and appreciates the fact that there's people that are immunocompromised, people don't feel safe, wear a mask, but it's not mandated, it should be choice. And I felt it was great to hear him say that from my, from my standpoint. Um, go ahead, Brian. Okay, I don't have much. I want to thank, again, the highway for everything you did and the staff that's helped behind it, doing that. And uh, I think it's great. Like, I've heard a lot of positive things. And um, as far as the mask, anytime I'm ready, I, got, I had mine in my pocket tonight just in case. I wasn't sure. So, I mean, I don't want to wear it because sometimes <laughs> I go home with a headache wearing it because you're breathing in. in. <clears throat> so, and I got a, a relative that, he has severe headaches when he puts a mask on. So. But again, to make sure people around me are safe, if they want me to, just say so. Okay, thanks, Brian. Thank yep. I also want to, I wanted to, for mine, uh, just thank Gary. I, I forgot to do it. I feel bad afterward because as soon as I lift bones up, and thank Gary for his service on the select board. I know he still serves on the DRV, but um, I, I learned a lot from Gary in the time he served. and. And I just feel like he went out on a note where he was really unappreciated, you know, the way it happened. And I just feel bad about it because people have no idea what he, his contributions to the town were pretty hard to top by anybody. And I know I said my piece, but um, I certainly appreciate him. And, um, you know, I wish him well, whatever he does in the future. But I hope he's still on the DRB. And, um, and my second one was actually came from a talk. I went and spent some time with the highway guys which is great, and um, wanted to, it's kind of a good thing, uh, switching roles and liaisons and everything, And because I hadn't spent that much time over there, and I went over and spent time talking to the guys, and, and one thing that, that came up out of it that concerns me greatly is the salt shed down there on Cochrane Road, and after talking to the guys, and it sounds to me like it's a safety issue, um, the loader operating in that salt shed is a very unsafe condition. Um, the salt shed is old, falling apart. It sand doesn't... Shed. Sand shed. Sand shed. Sorry. Sorry, you're right. Thank you. <laughs> the sand shed on Cochrane Road. Um, it's falling apart. We've heard bits and pieces over the years, but to talk, to talk to the guys that worked in that, on a loader way up top, and they're breathing the fumes, you know, which is bad, you get a headache. If, if you're running a loader in that sand shed for any amount of time, you go, you go home with a pounding headache. And I'm pretty sure that's an OSHA violation. Not to mention the way they describe the safety of the whole thing. 
And one thing I wanted to have, you know, have Kevin talk about is what are our options? And it sounds to me like we can do what a lot of towns do, don't have a sand shed. A lot of towns don't have them. For, for years, a state Greg's didn't have them. You know, it, it's not adequate, it's not big enough, and it's unsafe. So I'm thinking, get rid of it. You know, there's room to have sand there and not have it be a safety issue. Because the way they have to work inside that shed, they have to pile it up and it just sounds terrible. I haven't seen them doing it, but I can imagine. And, and just as soon as I hear all the, you know, the CO in there, it's, that's bad news. But do you want to talk a little bit about that? I know you probably wanted to, wanted to have a presentation of your own, but. Well, yes, yeah, so and just uh, quick highlights on the whole thing is that it takes, we calculated, Scott and myself calculated out this year, that it adds about $2.10 more per yard to do what we do to fill that sand shed. In labor. In labor and fuel cost and the machine. It just, to me, that, that in itself warrants consideration of getting rid of it. But also, we, when we fill the whole bottom floor and then we build the ramps and we fill a layer and we build another ramp and we fill a layer. And as we go up, of course, it's a dome, so everything's getting smaller. Well, you can go in the dome and look throughout over the years on how the equipment has gone and hit the boards and hit the side of the building and, and all that. And the building itself is, I think it was put in in 84-ish. It's just, everything is so dry rotted in it that it's just a matter of time. Somebody's going to hit it and it's going to come down anyway. Yeah. But, and the, it's the CO, while you're in there with a the loader, there is a fan there's, that's up in there that tries to move as much air as possible, but it just, it isn't adequate. And the building itself was designed for a um, conveyor system. The conveyor system was never put in. At this point it, in the game with that building, you'd have to rebuild the whole building in order for it to accept the conveyor system now. It doesn't matter then if the sand is sitting out in the weather. No, nope. every town around us has sand sitting outside. I mean, it, it, it uses less salt than what most people would think. Do you have frozen chunks? Sure, I've got frozen chunks now on the side that sand shed. Yeah, that's the thing it really people doesn't don't make realize. Any it freezes in the shed. Right. The shed's not heated. Mm -hmm. You know, but and it holds the cold. And it actually holds the cold, so it's colder in the shed, yes. <laughs> I, I want to bring that up because I'd like to make a plan to get rid of it sooner rather than later, as soon as we can. Well, it makes We're sense. Right there We're right there with you. Well, this is the first I've heard of it. Yeah, so I had to uh, just confirm the teen of it. Because the, the Sanchez is an asset of the town. If we were looking to demolish it to rebuild it, then it would, it would take uh, more approval to do that. To demolish it because it's a safety hazard to their health and everybody's health around there. Uh, we 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 have a plan in place to demolish that this summer, and we're moving from there. Let's do it. It's, yeah. it's, like it's a definite safety yeah. piece for us, and uh, I, I'm just not. I wasn't willing to continue with. It. I just need to get my clearance from Tina. So. Yeah, the yeah, cost savings and all that to me doesn't matter. It's a yeah. safety thing. It should go safety. away. As soon as that was the thing that was glaring at me when I left the highway garage the other day. I'm like. That's a no-brainer. We got to do something about it soon. <clears throat> so anyway, that was my select board concern. A good one. So I'm gonna pass this. This is the uh, appointment sheet for Brian Tomlinson that you approved earlier tonight. The five districts for signatures on the bottom. Okay. Do we have any other business? Yeah. Just something quick. Um, dog licensors are due by April first, and there's a rabies clinic this Saturday. Um, from 8.30 to 10 at the Morris will be opening. Thank you. Good reminder. Does the does Raby Clinic cost money? Yes, it's on the website. Okay. It's on, um, under the clerk, it's on the dog, the animals page, and, um, there's a picture. The town's not putting it on. It's justice for dogs. Okay. It's been on Front Porch Farm. I forgot. I think it might be $25. Okay. But. I have a motion. You have a motion. Ready? Go for it. 
I find that premature pub general public knowledge would clearly place the public body or a person involved at a substantial disadvantage. I therefore move that we go into executive session to discuss the appointment or employment or evaluation of a public officer or employee subject to Title I, VSA 313A3, including Eric Dodge and Sarah Haskins. Second. We have a second. Second by Brian. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed unanimously. Sorry, I didn't get the second. Brian. 